everybody, and welcome to a very, very special stream. Um, I'm gonna do a little spiel, a little introductory spiel to get us started here, because this is gonna be a VOD, and I wanna greet all the YouTube people as well. Hello. Uh, my name is Marissa Lenti. I am a professional voice actor and voice director of eight or nine years now. Um, I've been in a bunch of games and anime, such as Fairy Tale, One Piece, Attack on Titan, um, Borderlands 3, and more. Um, and this stream is a very, very special stream, and I'm going to kind of give you guys a lowdown on what it is before we get started here. Uh, for those of you who are watching on Twitch, it is called On Game Design and Voice Acting, an interview-shaped chat, because that is exactly what it is going to be. Uh, I have the developer of In Stars and Time here um, to talk about exactly that. And we have collected questions from the Discord for this game uh, to talk about and to kind of volley back and forth and have a good time. On YouTube, this video is going to be called The Best Role I Never Played um, because the whole thing that spurred this on is the fact that I was on a stream, which is playing in the background right now, on my best friend Jello's channel, uh, Jello Plays Games, where we voiced the entire game as the characters. Uh, and through that process, I discovered um, that this character that I accidentally got to play by coming into the stream five minutes late uh, was one of the most emotionally fulfilling characters I have ever voiced in my life. Um, there's a couple other characters on the thumbnail who have also been very emotionally fulfilling for me. I know uh, Gangle from The Amazing Digital Circus, Financier Cookie from Cookie Run Kingdom, and Yuna from Kuma 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 Bear are going to be on there. Um, so if you clicked on this video for those, hi, I'm the voice of those characters. Uh, but today is going to be all about Seafren from In Stars and Time, the greatest character I never played. And here with me... It is it, me. It's me. Oh, sorry. Is that was that my was that my cue? That's my cue. That was your cue. That was cute. That's my cue. Hi. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Adrian, or insert disc five, uh, and I am the creator, developer, artist, writer, blah 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 blah, blah of In Stars and Time. Hi. Yay! Thank you for joining me, and I'm so glad that we made this happen. Yeah. So excited. Yes. <laughs> uh, shout out to uh. Ansem and, oh god, I'm gonna say their name wrong, Blim, I believe. Um, it's Brynn. Are... Good old Brynn. Brynn, thank you. Uh, two members of the In Stars and Time Discord, one of whom is a mod, uh, who went through all of the effort of, I mean, Ansem came up with this idea, shout outs, um, and also um, the uh, uh, mod went through the effort of announcing to uh, the Discord that this was going to happen and collecting questions for us and going through all the questions and um, just I really appreciate their help. Thank you so much. Thank and... you for preparing for that. My God. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to uh, we're going to go through them now and have a beautiful, great time. And it's going to be awesome. Um, OK, so one thing I got to tell you guys is no spoilers in chat please no spoilers in chat at least for the beginning of the stream um it is very 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 important that people who click on this randomly on the youtubes uh can enjoy it at least for the beginning of it um so no spoilers until we reach the spoiler zone which will be i don't know maybe an hour into stream <laughs> the spoiler zone the spoiler zone the spoiler zone so let's go ahead and start with some non-spoiler questions. Yay! Yay! So the first one, the top one, the, the big cheese, the big kahuna is, did you have any voices in your head for the main characters while writing? No! Next question! <laughs> no, I'm gonna be real. Not really, because I am not a very uh, audio person uh, I'm much more of a visual person so I did not think about any voices uh, while I was doing this uh, a couple like many months ago someone did ask me what were my like voice um, voices for the characters and uh, my my answer which, which I, I kind of still agree with to some extent is like 
what did I say? Uh, for Mirabel, it's uh, Isabel's voice from Animal Crossing. Uh, <laughs> like a oh, that's it. That's her voice. That's Mirabel's voice. Uh, <laughs> uh, for uh, Bonnie, it's the uh, Splatoon kids' voices. Uh, like that <laughs> voice. Uh, Odile, I kind of think that she has that sort of voice where she probably smoked a lot of packs in her life. <laughs> uh, for Isabeau, I, I like when people did voices for the characters. I felt like Isabeau was the one that changed the most often, and I thought that was really fun. So mm. sometimes you would have people do doing a, a, like an All Might booming voice. Uh, or someone would do like a very um, flamboyant voice, and I'm like, I love all of these. Uh, and and for Sifrin, I'm uh, at the time I said that Sifrin is like the like a Dark Souls character where you choose their voice. Uh, mm. But honestly, you did such a good job with Sifrin. And it's like, all right, there you go. Forget what I said on my ah. Google post. Like just. Just put Vixen in there. You just, oh my god! This is, this is it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I mean, I really appreciate that. Oh my um, god! Yeah, I didn't mention it before, but oh my god, you did such an amazing. Like everyone did such an amazing job with the voices and with the emotion, uh, with the characters in the in the Jello stream, and I am so 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 thankful and like so amazed by the range of voices like this was an absolute delight the whole way through for sure oh i'm so glad yeah i uh i mean i guess i'll talk about it now but like <sighs> seafren was just it's the kind of character i never get to play in my professional life because so seafren is a he they uh i am a she they yep i am a she they and so often, despite sharing a they, I would still not be called in for this character. I feel like most casting directors would go with a more mask voice for yeah. Seafren. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was really cool to be like, oh, okay, like I don't really get to do this. The only time I get to play male characters is if they're like 12 or under. Mm. Um, Oh gosh, there's gonna there's ads. <laughs> yeah, Don't worry about the ads. I'm watching my friend's footage in the background of this stream. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's really cool to be like, okay, this is like an adult male non-binary, like mass non-binary character, mm. um, and to sort of be like, let me play, but let me play it with kind of my normal voice. The only thing that's really different is like. I'm not projecting peppiness the way that I do when I'm just speaking. Yeah, um, <laughs> I feel that. I was that. just kind, yeah. of, kind of flattened it out. Um, and also, the emotional range. Um, again, we're not in spoiler territory, so I won't go too far, but Seafren gets to go through so many more emotions than I've really ever gotten from one singular character. Um, I get a lot of characters where it's like, ooh, uh, you know, I get to, you know, laugh and I get to cry or I get to do this, that, or the other thing, but it's, it's very rarely everything. Um, and Seafrin gets to go through so many emotional highs and lows. Um, so again, to the, to the name of what this is going to be called, the greatest role I never played, uh, because we did it in an unofficial capacity. Um, I also had the benefit of, I was bouncing off of other people like my friends were there and they were playing the other characters for me um it was really really emotionally fulfilling i love really? <laughs> <Glad you. laughs> oh my goodness i feel like there's more i could say but we're gonna get into like Ooh, i feel like spoilers. we're gonna get there yeah so uh, we'll, we'll come we'll come back to that to my thoughts yes Later. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing in I'm seeing in the chat that maybe the music is a touch left. I turned it down. Let me know, chat, if it's okay now. Yeah, give us a sound check, chat. Yeah, I turned it down. Um, hopefully that's good. I can see we're we're sort of hitting a little bit higher. It seems good now to me. Great. Good. <laughs> Vixen is so anxious to talk about literally everything. <laughs> Let's yeah. go to talk about the spoilers now. <laughs> now. Well, here's the thing. Like we've been. 
I've been teasing this live stream um, for so long where I was like, guys, like all my streams this week, I was like, we will talk about In Stars in Time. I swear, but <laughs> we're going to have a stream specifically for it. Um, better now. Great. Good. Thank, thank you, guys. Um, okay. Well, so here's an interesting question uh, that kind of ties in. Um, so... Someone asked, uh, what process went into the timing of lines? The way they're paced is so incredibly naturistic, all the pauses, emphasis, etc. I'm really glad that people are liking that because it was very important to me, but I also thought it might have been annoying for some people, so I'm glad it's not actually annoying. Uh, but um, the way, like already in RPG Maker, there's some code that you can add uh, in the dialogue to kind of go, all right, have a pause for like a quarter of a second, for like half a second, for like a whole second sometimes. Uh, and uh, I already added uh, automatically that every time there's a, a comma or a period or that sort of stuff, that it's going to stop a little bit on its own. Mm. Um, and I got the idea uh, because... Um, because I was watching people play Ace Attorney, and that's exactly what Ace Attorney does. Mm. Uh, and Ace Attorney, you even though there's no uh, voice acting in Ace Attorney, you still do get that sense of of timing because it stops for like a quarter of a second. But when there's a comma, it stops for half a second. When there's a period, all of that stuff, which does give the impression of someone talking. Uh, and um, I added it in a lot of other places to give us like yeah to to give the impression of, of people talking and sometimes they have a something that they're not really willing to say or that they're hesitant about saying so i made sure to add uh pauses at that moment um and uh just because just because i like it and i feel like it gives so much insights into how people speak and yes. uh and also for people that do voice acting, I feel like it is a lot easier to know, like what can, like it also gives you an impression of what kind of person uh, you uh, is actually talking. Like I remember very clearly in Ace Attorney, there's the um, uh, Wendy Old Bag, and how at some points she just starts ranting and the text goes noticeably faster, mm -hmm. and that gives you such an like such a, a better insight into what kind of person that she is and how she just goes on immense rants. Uh, so, so yeah, just just really got inspired by that. I really wanted to to add that. Uh, I loved it, and I mean, I'm glad <laughs> we complimented it during our streams. But um, as a voice actor, you don't get scripts formatted like that ever. Um, yeah, <laughs> with stuff like you know, like there's like the little wiggly text or like all lowercase or all caps or like it's even bigger um and uh, like the giant text it just gives you so much to chew on i'm like okay i am pretty sure i know how this is supposed to be said i think i understand um exactly how this character is supposed to say this line and it's great you know as a voice actor it's like oh that gives me so much to chew on and it gives me so much direction and like I understand exactly what need what I what I need to do here and you can still interpret certain things in certain ways like there's still definitely room for the actor to bring something um but it it just helps especially when you're cold reading or you don't know yeah, I'm sure. you've never seen yeah. the lines before <laughs> you're just like oh god I got to read this right now and uh the formatting of the text was so helpful, um, which is great because as much as we're going to talk about voice acting for this game, there is no voice acting in this game. Um, the strength of it is in that like pacing of text and the little dibbly doops and the little beebly bops that kind of give you a sense of like, this is what it's supposed to sound like. And I'm you can glad. hear it in your head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right, we've got uh, which of the non seafren characters was the most fun to write? Uh, my answer is going to change every time, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Seafren's always going to be number one. Uh, I feel like I'm still with Odile. That is, like, the, the most fun to write. Mm. Uh, just because she's just like, all right, I see what's going on. I, 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 I know tropes, okay? So let's try <laughs> Let's try to figure out what's happening right now, even though any other character would be like, we're just gonna ignore that and not 
not not say anything about that because we're right. kind of we're kind of all pushovers. <laughs> uh, so I, ha, like writing her is always very fun, just because she's so blunt. <laughs> I mean, good because coming out of the stream, uh, we all agreed we were like, I think Odile is our favorite. Who's not Seafren? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, I loved Odile. And it's not often you get an older female character who gets to be good and gets to have an interesting backstory and gets to have great dialogue without being either team mom or like girl boss ified. <laughs> like she kind of sucks. <laughs> and that was. Like it's like, oh, you're not you're not listening to any of them sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you're too analytical, my girl. Wake I up. loved it. <laughs> I loved it. because uh, it, it's a big problem that I feel like happens to female characters is girl bossification, I guess, where you know, they're capable and they're smart, which is great. But then they they can have no flaws. Um and they can't, you know, be at odds with any other characters. They have to be, like, completely liked and completely leader. And I'm like, I don't, nah, I don't like it. Yeah. The great thing about yeah. Odile is that she can <laughs> she can kind of bump up against people. Yeah, like, let, 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 let female characters suck and be not good <laughs> at things. <laughs> did, did you know uh, good human beings are also not good at things sometimes? I, I know that's crazy. I'm sorry. That's true. That's so true. <laughs> And the the ability of a character to be flawed is is I mean it's so important. So yeah, it, it's so essential to to having an interesting and, and relatable character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Oh yeah, someone wanted to know. Uh if each in Stars and Time character were to have a Digimon, what would they <laughs> have? So we talked about this for like 20 minutes. Before yeah, we so let, get ready for like a 30 minute long. Uh... No, 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 no. <laughs> I will not allow it to happen. I literally was like, I can't get into this because I will be talking about it for uh, hours. Um, I just want to show you guys, this is Bergamon. As you can see, this is who I would give Bonnie. Yeah, I agree. That's my only, that's my only uh, solidified thought cannot argue against it has to be this yeah i i, com I completely agree i my my personal picks uh knowing very little about digimon because i just watched season one and two back when i was a child uh i think that what was the what was the slime name again Gar garamon garamon <laughs> yeah uh Gar like bonnie would also have a garamon uh ujio would have a Vadimon, Vadimon. Vadimon. Yeah, uh, those are my the official picks. You're not allowed to say anything else. This is just how it is. Uh, you oh. should you should actually check those out so you can see how uh, Vadimon is such a perfect pick for a deal. I think you'll all agree. Uh, for uh, for for Sifrin, probably Tsukaimon, mm. which is like evil Patamon. I feel like this is perfect for Sifrin. Uh, just a, a little guy. Uh, I think. Uh, who did I say for Isabo? The horrible one. I had a horrible one for Isabo. The horrible one. <laughs> no, no, it's, no. Is Isabo was to, uh, to Togemon. Togemon. Uh, our, yeah. Uh, Mirabel was the one that's before Gatomon. Salamon. Salamon. And Loop has. Which one's the wizard? Wizardmon. Wizardmon? <laughs> yeah, Wizardmon. Wizardmon. Yeah, Wizardmon. Yeah. Uh, those are um, official picks. Uh, do not change them. Uh, oh do my not, god. Do not do not kill the author. Uh, official hashtag official TM copyright. I, trademark. I hate. I hate that Garamon and Vademon are involved in any capacity. I can't believe you've done this. They're just they're just little guys. Listen, you're just seeing them as horrible and ugly because you you don't uh, you you're not seeing them with love. Uh, if if you if you open your eyes, uh, remove your uh, your nice glasses and put on your pink glasses, uh, then you're gonna understand that Garamon is such perfect uh, perfect um, 
perfect pick for Bonnie uh, because he, he's a terrible little slime that throws poop at people and Bonnie would be all about that. Um, and uh, and also Odile would have uh, uh, Vademon, Vademon, like because it is just like a big alien with big brain. And isn't that just Odile at her in her purest form? Um, so you know, sounds like you don't know Digimon as much as you think you are, uh, because obviously oh. this is the very best choice that you can pick, uh, and you should go back to Digimon school. All oh, right? okay. This <laughs> we are ending stream. <laughs> it's over. Uh, but 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 no, I I love I love Bergamon. Right, this is actually so thanks. <laughs> It's my one thought. I, we're moving on. <laughs> moving on. Otherwise, it's going to be 30 minutes of us fighting. And you go, no, get one for Bonnie. Wake up. No. See the light. See the light. <laughs> Vixen and Dev have a falling out. Yeah, we are having a falling out right my now. My life on stream. <laughs> so someone asked, uh, Vixen, how would you voice the other characters? Now, here's the problem. Because we have done six episodes, of, episodes, you know, quote unquote, of um, us voicing these characters, I am now brain poisoned and I cannot hear other voices for the most part. Um, so if you turn to me and you were like, do an Odeal voice, I'm just going to start mimicking Savvy. That's what's <laughs> going to happen is I'm going to do a British accent and I'm going to mimic Savvy's mannerisms because I have now heard someone voice the character in a way that I liked. I think this is like a psychology thing of um, voiceover and of the human mind where when you hear a character with a voice, if you like it, it becomes immutable for you. Um, actually, yes. Which is why, which is where I think the sub versus dub stuff really starts and ends. Is if you hear their Japanese voice first, that's going to be their voice to you for like ever, unless you hear their English or other voice, like their French voice or whatever, like super close by. Like if you watch the Italian dub and the Japanese dub back to back, you might be like, oh, I could picture both of them. Um, but if you watch the Japanese dub and then a year later you try to watch the English dub or the German dub or something you're gonna be brain poisoned a little bit where you're mm -hmm. gonna be like that's not the voice that's not the voice that I've been hearing in my head when I think about this character that's not the voice that I remember like something about it is wrong and it happens when characters get recast where people you know get up in arms about it and and for justifiable reasons I hate when people get recast but um it also affects, you know, if you're going to step into someone's role and you're like, here's, you know, my version, you're almost inevitably going to be pulling parts of the old performance out where you're like, I, this is what I remember. And it's, it's what your brain, you know, does that being said, um, as much as I wouldn't be able to extradite, you know, like savvy from Odile or, or will from Isabo. Um, I, I could see myself like casting this and I know what actors I would want to bring in. Like, for example, I mean, me and Jello have said it a million times, even while we were on streams, like, uh, Mirabelle, I hear Danny Chambers, um, who is an actress that I have used in many, many things and is really, really great and plays Molly, the lead character in Jello's show, Epithet Erased, um, probably not doing the Molly voice, maybe just something more akin to her normal voice. But like, I hear Danny in my head when I see Mirabelle dialogue, even though I recall how Jello like paced her and would, would speak her lines. Like I hear that, but in Danny's voice. Um, so if you asked me to step into any of these other characters, I'd be too brain poisoned. I would just hear, <laughs> I would just hear automatically do the same voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would be like, all right, this is my Odile voice. And it's like, that's just savvy. You're just <laughs> mimicking her. <laughs> you can't do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, and then someone had an interesting question. Uh, they asked, what would be the logistics of adding voice acting to the game as a free update or paid DLC? Uh, Logistics would be in your court, but I do want to say, I feel like 
adding voice acting to this game would inherently alter its vibe? Yeah. Like, uh, uh, as much as I loved all of you guys doing voices, uh, I think that something that I personally really wanted from the game in a lot of different ways, and not only uh, voice acting and people voicing the characters, is that I really want people playing to have their own interpretation of things that are happening, and that includes voices. And uh, having voice acting would kind of remove some of that, some of that mystery. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, I, I, I'm not about that. I want people to have mystery. However, like I'm, I would like, I have been thinking like, what, what if we do another trailer and then we can ask like Vixen to do the voices, yeah. like something like that. I feel like for for a trailer or something. Um, would be super interesting and super fun to do. Uh, but adding a DLC, like l logistics aside, uh, that is not something I would want to do with the game because I feel like it would, yeah, like you said, like alter the way that it is. Uh, yeah. Not like I personally, I don't feel like it's going to make it better or worse. It's just going to make it different. <laughs> different. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's like as much as I would love to voice the entire game because oh my god there's there's so much great stuff in here um, and like I was saying it's one of the best scripts I've ever worked with so obviously if you ask a voice actor do you want to work with the best script you've ever worked with I'd be like <laughs> yeah um, but, but it would inherently alter the vibe of the game um, and I don't know if I would like that as much as I would be very proud, I'm sure. Yeah, um, <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't know if I would like the version of the game that has voices, even if I was proud of every voice, loved every performance, polished it per to perfection, it would be a different game. Yeah, and then even even if it was like a, a more limited amount of voices, like instead of having actually voiced the whole time, even just having like the characters go, wow, or like, Mm -hmm. Hey, let's go! Or like, you know, the, the normal, like, everyday bark lines. Even that would kind of give too much of an indication of who the characters are and remove some of that mystery! The I, mystery. I, I like the mystery! Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I, I But I do, I love the idea of of giving them voices in, like, an animation or something. That would be fun be so fun and you know what people if you want an in stars in time anime you need to buy the game more that's the, I, like, the game. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's good i don't know like listen <laughs> we need like an insane amount of like people to buy the game so like i don't want it's not gonna happen um but, but yeah what like, if? Was, but what if you know maybe you should buy the game more you should buy the game 10 times and then maybe maybe you'll have <laughs> you know like don't cetera. die yeah <laughs> Don't die. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> would be fun. Someone said a someone said a player musical. Actually, I would love that. Oh. I would love a musical. Can you imagine? <laughs> I can imagine actually. Oh my god! I would love that so much. Oh no, I want that to happen now. Oh god. <laughs> that would be so good. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, this is the last no spoilers question I had highlighted, but um, it only took us a half hour to blast through those. So maybe yeah, we'll, so we'll check out some of these other ones. Yeah. Um, but the other one I had highlighted was for you. Um, do you think your experience writing comics has influenced how you write dialogue in the game? When you first started writing for games, was it an adjustment? Is there anything you enjoy more about one or the other? Yeah, absolutely. I definitely used the way that I write comics to write this game. Uh, I did a um, a tutorial about how to kind of separate comic bubbles because, you know, you can have like the comic bubbles where someone has a very long dialogue and that's in only one bubble and the bubble takes the whole page. Mm. Or you can also have a uh, different bubble, like one sentence kind of separated into different bubbles and that gives you also an indication of how the person is talking the same way that different bubble shapes uh gives you like sometimes you have like just the round bubbles if you have like a more rectangular bubble it kind of gives the impression that this is maybe like a phone call uh if you have like more goopy bubbles it's like someone is crying uh so 
and that's like it was a, a tiny bit of an adjustment to not have the bubbles to worry about but that's kind of also how, how I came to the idea of having timing uh, added into the code and uh, the lines mm. appearing because that's I'm, I'm kind of thinking about it in terms of bubbles where it's like you have this this first sentence here and then if they're having like some hesitation in the middle of the sentence you're going to have the first sentence in one bubble the second sentence in another bubble um like the length of the bubble also like they're just i feel like those uh this was very easy to translate like a more uh comic dialogue to a more uh game uh dialogue and but the one thing that i really like about video games and that's why i'm like will i ever go back to comics probably not because you can write so much in a video game because you that's don't have true. to worry about having drawing more bubbles and drawing more panels and everything because like i it took me a while for sure to draw all of those portraits now that those portraits are done, I can just decide to add, like, and, and that's what I did for most of the games, that I decided to add, like, a whole scene, and writing the scene and adding it into the game took me 20 minutes, and it's just so perfect! It's just so good! Um, and, uh, yeah, that's why it is so much easier for me to write in a video game form now. Um, I'm never gonna go back. It's over, comics. It's over. Oh, I'm, so sad. I've left you behind. <laughs> but I mean, even though you didn't have to, you drew five bajillion sprites still. So that must yeah. have taken some time even no, then. No, it's fine. I had fun. Was uh, it fine? It, it was genuinely fun. Uh, there were some parts where I was like, that was I am like, that was, fuck, that, blah, 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 that was the worst. Uh, but you're like, no, actually drawing all of those portraits was really really fun and there's like a couple of moments where i was like i need like a special portrait just for this sentence and i could just do it great <laughs> and there's some great portraits in this game i love the sprite work yay <laughs> oh yeah chat has discovered that there is a new c for an emote on my channel they found it <laughs> please en please enjoy chat please enjoy uh, he's a he's a sub uh, subscriber emote right now, but I might move him to the bits tier later. Um, we'll see. There they go. There they all go. <laughs> Very good. All right, let's look at what some of these other non-spoiler questions that I didn't highlight initially, just to see what we could do. Oh, here's a new, very important one. <laughs> I saw you on the Excel sheet just immediately go, go here. What this, about one. this one. <laughs> here's an important one that all the people who clicked onto this VOD to find out about in Stars and Time need to know the answer to. Absolutely. Has slash would Seifrin eat a bug? <laughs> Uh, the answer is no. I'm so sorry. I know everyone thinks Sifrin is a gremlin, but the real gremlin is Bonnie. Uh, and Bonnie would eat a bug. Yes. Yeah, Sifrin is interesting in that they have the gremlin shape, but not the gremlin personality. Yeah, like they... they the gremlin personality is manufactured. Very much manufactured. Where it's like, it's gonna... Like, actually, they might eat a bug if... If, for example, Odile was like, please don't eat a bug, then Sifrin would be like, I'm going to eat a bug. Yeah, like, just to freak you out. <laughs> yeah, like, would not eat a bug uh, on, on their own, would eat a bug if anyone was like, please don't eat that bug. It's like, well, I, I gotta. Well, now I gotta. <laughs> I gotta. Like, I, I this is this is my role, you know? I have Here, to. Here's... Here's a here's a character question. Would they eat a bug if starving? Or are they uh, no bugs in my mouth under any circumstances unless it's funny? It's making me so sad to think about Sifrin starving. No. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna skip this one. Let's I don't wanna skip. think about them eating bugs if they're starving. Sad. Too, this, too, hashtag too sad. Too sad. Um, let's see, what else do we have in here? Here's one. Uh, as a game development student, I'm really interested in the process of pitching a game to a publisher. How did you prepare? How much of the game was developed by the time it was pitched? And how did the pitch go? I will keep it very vague uh, because mm. I am very much of a special case. 
but um, well, well, I said that, so now I have to say it. But pretty much, uh, I, I uh, my producer Dora is the one who contacted me, <laughs> and oh. not and not me going to publishers. Uh, so I had done the prologue, and uh, Dora was following me, uh, and and really liked it. Uh, so contacted me and went, "Do you wanna, like, are you gonna make something else?" And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> uh, and so yeah. that's that, that, yeah. uh, and so that's kind of like usually you would kind of expect publishers to be like that the 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 developers would contact the publisher but for me it was the reverse i i mm. actually don't know if this is like a very usual i genuinely don't know i have no experience when it comes to that stuff i'm like oh i did it i did she dora send me an email <laughs> i don't know well, you <laughs> didn't you had done something very unique in putting out a proof of concept because um, aside from like a straight up demo, you don't really see that too much. Um, yeah, and that was part of it. Like the, the real, like the reason I made the prologue is because I knew it was going to be a big undertaking and there's no way I was going to start with making uh the the full game <laughs> and and that I needed to like do a little bit of a proof of concept to myself uh, and then it also add uh, had uh, the added thing of um, like do people like it would people be interested let's let's make people think about the game while I'm making it uh, so I I would say that this was a very good thing <laughs> to to me to the game that i actually had like a, a, um, a proof of concept and a prototype for people to see mm. uh because it is like from a like a, a marketing point kind of um it is very difficult for people to get interested in a concept and it is a lot easier for people to get interested in something tangible, even if it is something very small. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of the the difference between saying, like, can, can you imagine if I just went, I am making a time loop game? Like, if I'm saying that, it might make some people interested, but it's not giving any other... Uh, anything else about it. It's like, listen, this little guy, I have a picture of him. He's my little, my little son thing. And uh, <laughs> that, and it has a, like, there's a whole time loop thing attached to it. Uh, just trust me, it will be good. But, <laughs> but by having the prologue, I can have people actually interested. Uh, I can actually put some, um, some foreshadowing i can have them ask like have the player ask themselves some questions and so uh that's also like my my recommendation minutes if you have a project that you think is going to be like like really really big or like just bigger than something that you've done before you should actually make uh, a proof of concept uh, to yourself and also to get people interested in what you're making because it is always so sad when you have someone who's been working on something for five years and it's like, but you're a hermit. Can you show us what you've done? Can you, can we play right. it? And it's like, no, I've been working on this for five years. Like, it's like, do a demo, <laughs> do something. something. <laughs> do well, something. It's, like, it's like when people post their OCs, right? Um, where you can get really interested in someone's OCs and concept of like, oh, like, look at the, this is great artwork or I really like the design, but there's nothing, there's no meat for you to grab onto until they give you something. Yeah. And, and I kind of relate to that a bit to uh, some, like, especially when it comes to comics, a lot of people are kind of worried to start drawing things and they feel like they have to first learn how to draw before they can tell stories. But you know, like, what's the name of that comic that's literally just stick figures, like X, C, D, whatever, mm -hmm. X, D, whatever. Um, and uh, that is literally just stick figures. and that person has been writing comics for a very long time with their stick figures and people are still really into it because the stories are good mm -hmm. and um and that's why and and also that's why when as a as an illustrator sometimes you like you spend like a month drawing something and you don't get a lot of notes whatever but you do like one little doodle and that little doodle gets a ton of notes mm -hmm. and i feel like most of the time when that happens is because the thing that you spent a lot of time doing 
doesn't really have a story. It's just the nice picture. But the thing that you do, you've done really quickly, like actually has a, like a little story or something funny or like a funny meme. Like that's why it has more notes is because people are like, that's funny or that made me feel something. And sadly, mm -hmm. the illustration is like, oh, that's a Renaissance painting. I guess that looks good. Right. <laughs> no, absolutely. So, and, and, and that's why, like, what I'm saying is like, arts, like, making good art doesn't matter. What matters is making good stories. Mm. Unless, unless you're making really good art, <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> uh, it, it's interesting because it's very similar to something that I keep telling voice actors. Um, you know, they come to me and they're like, I really want to, you know, uh, get involved in voice acting. I want to be hired. I want to play cool characters. Like, how do I do it? How do I get noticed? And the thing that I keep telling people is like, make your own stuff. Like, make go, like, <laughs> like make dub something. <laughs> yeah, make something. Like, dub over a comic with permission. Um, make an original something if you can. An audio play. Like, literally anything. Because a lot of the voice actors that I love to use, I was introduced to through those kinds of original projects. Where it's like, I saw, you know, like, a funny video. There's so many where it's like I saw a funny meme and I thought it was well voiced and I contact that person and I'm like, hey, are you a professional? Do you also do like, you know, full character based, you know, story stuff? And they're like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, great. You know, let's get you involved. A bridge series. Yeah. I mean, again, there's some there's some legal mumbo jumbo you got to be careful about, um, especially when you're using other people's IPs and other people's um, footage. But there are ways to create those kinds of things like fan projects or like comic dubs or whatever that generally is fine and will attract slightly more attention of like, hey, I'm not just telling you that I'm a voice actor. Here's me voice acting. Um, here is a thing I have made. Here is me telling you a story um, or telling you a joke. And if it gets an emotional reaction out of someone or it gets like a, ooh, you know, that's interesting. I want to know more about this person. That's where I get all my actors from. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's a great way for people to get started because so many people will look at the internet landscape and be like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing out here. How do I become a voice actor? Like, it's so obtuse. And I feel like, I mean... From where I'm sitting, the fact that you made a game is still redonkulous to me, even though you've done it and people have done it before. Because um, when you are not in a particular space, it can seem impenetrable to complete a task that you see other people doing and doing well. Um, I don't know. It's really interesting how it's it's almost the exact same advice. The complete same when it comes to like voice acting. I'm like, that's crazy you know so many things <laughs> i know nothing about that like we were talking last time and i think we were watching was it the, the state of play mm -hmm. and i don't remember the voice but like you heard someone's voice and you're like oh i know exactly who it is and they're doing a great job and, and then this person is not doing a great job and like i see no difference what are you hearing <laughs> what kind of he what kind of ears do you have uh but yeah i completely agree and i just as a little anecdote i feel like uh, one of the, like, the first 2D animator job uh, that I got. Uh, I got because I had a portfolio, but I think mostly because I showed that I was doing some little animations for fun. Uh, I think they saw, like, I had a, a Game Grumps animation that I made, and they were like, all right, her portfolio is good, but this, this is funny. <laughs> it was like, this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like that's what kind of made my my uh, my application kind of stand out. So it's like, oh, this is this is stupid and funny and meme-ish. And it's like, there you go. <laughs> so, so that's what you need. You just need to make people laugh or feel something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's so hard because everyone is vying for the same sets of eyeballs. You know, it's like there's only there's a limited amount of people out there in this world. And if, especially if you're asking them to spend money on you, um, be that, you know, buy my game or be that, like, hire me for voice acting, you are asking them to allocate their limited funds to you. Um, so you have to give them, you know, a reason to want to engage with you. You can't just be like, I swear I have a good idea or I swear I have a good voice. You have to be like, here is me 
actionably doing something that you would want to watch on your free time mm-hmm. and you would mm-hmm. want to engage with on your free time. And then that person can go, oh, I really like this on my free time. I'm going to carve out time and resources to engage with this person more. Yeah. Uh, And also, I guess the cynical way of of looking at it is, are you a cog or are you an interesting cog? (laughs) Oh. (laughs) But that's because I'm like cynical about it that's the very cynical way uh but like, like just, just just kind of show that you're interested in the industry that you're going into or fake it if you're not interested because that also happens you don't have to go into art because you're actually interested in the industry sometimes you need money and that's fun. and art is the only thing you can do so there you go yay <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it is so funny how, again, like you're saying like, oh, like to me, like voice acting is this inscrutable world. Whereas when I'm in it, to me, it seems like very simple because I'm I'm so immersed in it where I'm just like, yeah, you know, like immediately I started thinking about don't watch the ad. Don't look at the ad. Don't worry about the ad. Um, I immediately I was like, oh, yeah, you know, let me, um think about like oh who would I cast or like oh you know I really like this part of so-and-so's performance and it's like oh you know sometimes people don't think about that or you know it, it's not it doesn't plague everybody's thoughts they don't all have the same brain <laughs> <they> do. <laughs> yeah exactly that's exactly how I feel about animation where it's just like what do you mean you don't realize that animation sucks and I could do it better <laughs> Exactly. I, I could do this better. Hire me instead. Hire me. Hire me. I mean, that's. I, I feel like you know everyone feels that way about their realm. But then you look outwards to other people, and you're like, I don't. I can't even begin to imagine. Um, which is why, like you know, reviews and critique can be so skewed. Because if I critique a video game. I am inevitably going to be a little softer on it than if I am going to critique the voice acting in said video game. Because the voice like, acting, yeah. I know. <laughs> I feel like I'm being so much more critical of video games that I play now. Where I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my god, you couldn't even fix that. And uh, and, it, and if I see like someone uh, critique a game that I really like, I'm like, but are you a game developer though? <laughs> like what are your credentials (laughs) you don't even know yeah i mean it exactly the same when i see people critique voice acting i'm like um you're not attacking this from the right perspective and you don't understand the ins and outs but then if someone critiques like a show i'm like we like making a show is like real hard i don't i I couldn't even get in yeah i don't know how to start that seems really hard but yeah (laughs) it's It's so so, you gotta gotta be a hater but in the right way (laughs) Right it's good situation. to be it's good to be informed because when like again when vo- when people critique voice acting right so often people will be like oh so and so didn't turn in a good performance or like i don't like this voice for the character and so often that's not what the critique should be it's usually the director did a bad job or this person was miscast, like they were put in the wrong role. They're doing a good job, but just they do not have, like they have not been empowered by the production. But that's such a nuanced take. Yeah. And you gotta, (laughs) you gotta accept that like most people are not going to get that involved in a, um, in an, in a field that is not theirs. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Someone says Jello has like superpowers of critique. It's 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 he has brain to care much disease where he will actually immerse himself in fields he doesn't work in, um, <laughs> and be like, oh, I'm gonna understand how it is, and then I'm gonna critique it. Like that's that's a very him thing. Um, it's like an not- actual an actual critique's heart. <laughs> the the mind of a critic (laughs) you know again i i'm so like when it came to saying like oh what's your favorite video game i was for a long time i was like i don't know there's like a couple that i really love and like people be like why and i'm like i don't know they're fun you know like here's some games that i like or the critique is i just think it's nice like, I could tell when something was bad, you know, like, you don't, 
it, to go to the most basic example of food, if if food is <laughs> really bad, anyone can tell. Yeah, if it is really good, but it's so much a matter of taste that it's like, ah, oh. <laughs> it's a matter of taste, and then it's also like, um, you know, at a certain level, everything's just going to be tasty to someone who's not like knowledgeable. You know, if you give someone a meal anywhere from like three to five stars, they're going to be like, it's tasty. I don't know. Um, and it's going to take someone who's like really, really into it. Who's like, I can tell the difference between 4.5 and five, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. This is like an exquisite meal, and then this is one that's like pretty good, and then here's one that's fine, and you know, then we kind of go down the scale. Um, it's absolutely the two cakes argument, where when you produce the cake, you go, oh, yeah, I could have done this cake so much better. But most people will just be like, oh, a cake, awesome, I, I love cake, um, unless yeah. it's <laughs> absolutely terrible, and then people will be like, this cake sucks, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I, I I do feel like there are some like just to go back to the food analogy, just because I'm thinking very strongly about. Uh, so for the first time during the uh, Christmas break, uh, I was in France to see my mom, and we went to a, a really really good French restaurant, and I was like, I know what good food is. It's fine. I did not know what good food was until that <laughs> moment. Where it's just like. Oh, there's a difference. Oh, there's a difference. Like for the like I for the first time in my life, I was like like halfway done through the cake and I was like, soon this will be over. I have mm. never felt that towards food before. So it's like sometimes sometimes some things are so good that it just transcends like I've never I don't know anything about this. It's like, no, this is it. This is it. <laughs> This is the one! <laughs> this is the best it's ever been, baby. Yeah, you're never gonna have a cake that's better than this. You need to enjoy it because that's the last good cake of your life. But also, like, you know, it's it's interesting insofar as, like, not everything needs to be good food or, like, the best food you've ever had. Like, there's a lot of games that I play where I'm like, this game is fine. You know, I, I would not call it a masterpiece. I would not call it the best meal I've ever had. But sometimes I just want to have fast food. You know, I want to sit down and I want to have <laughs> fun and I want the fun to be beamed into my eyeballs immediately. I want and to that's, be occupied. <laughs> that's OK. Um, and, and that's something that, you know, again, like really stuck with me about voicing Seafrin. And as I was like, oh, this was like. I had my five star meal, but it can't always be like this because I blew my voice out playing Seafrin. Uh, I had to, I mean, my chat's gonna yell at me because I'm gonna say, I had to go on vocal rest. And then my chat's gonna be like, yeah, you streamed every single day after. Yeah, I'm not surprised time. at all. <laughs> I hope you're better now. <laughs> I'm fine now. Um, but I I had like a runner's high where I was like, I wanna keep streaming. Like I'm having, I'm, I, oh my God, I'm, I'm I need in, to talk. <laughs> I'm in it, you know, I need to talk to people and I need to talk about what we just experienced together. But I, I did do like slightly lower intensity streams where I didn't need to talk quite as much because I, I had blown my voice out. Um, and you can't do that for every single voice acting performance. You will die. Mm -hmm. um, and not all of them are going to call for that, right? Um, not every game character is going to call for all right, scream and cry and go for it. Um, it, it they can't all be like that because then everything yeah. that you everything that you consume, you'd be like, why is it, why is everybody screaming? What's going mm -hmm. on? You know, you're watching Dora the Explorer and everyone's giving it two hundred and ten percent. You're like, this is a little much. You, you guys need to chill. <laughs> yeah, you guys need to <laughs> chill out. Um, and it's cool sometimes when you get to play a character who's just fun. You know, I've played a lot of characters, especially in anime, where it's like, this is just a fun anime. You know, nothing high, high stakes happens. Nothing high intensity happens. We're just having a good time. And that can also be very fulfilling. Um, but it can be hard to go back after doing the five star meal. <laughs> At least I for a little that. while. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Where you're like, I just had a meal so good that whatever I have immediately after this is going to feel like the worst thing I've ever eaten in my life. And then eventually it'll level out. Um, yeah. But honestly, like the, the last 
piece of media that made me feel that way was playing Umineko. I was like, mm. this, this is it. This is it. <laughs> I finished it. I'm never, never going to get that high again. Like that was, that was just a masterpiece and that's it. It's over. Uh, but, and I was like, do any, like, I don't need to play any other, like, g story driven games anymore. <laughs> this is it. Um, this is it. This is it. Uh, but I, I will say also that I, I've slowly become a big, a, a big lover of playing, of playing and experiencing bad art, <laughs> uh, just because I've played some real dog shit games, okay? But <laughs> a lot of them still had something where I'm like, but that was fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, that that one part of it was just delightful, if only that was in a better game. <laughs> and sometimes it's it's worth it for that kind of stuff. Like, Absolutely. I will, I will sit through, I really like monster raising games, um, and they're, they're sort of a rare breed. Um, there's not mm -hmm. that many, and mm -hmm. not many of them are good. Mm -hmm. um, but I will sit through a bad monster raising game just to be like, let me look at all the little guys. I want to see all the little guys and I want to, you know, experience, even when the game is stupid, I want to yeah. experience what they came up with. Is, is um, there something new in the way that we are raising these little guys? Is there something fun? Mm hmm. Do you have any good designs in here? Because like maybe you've got like a handful of these little guys that are really good, even if the game is not that good. Mm hmm. And also, like, you can play a game where, like, it it could have a really weak element and everything else be great. Where it's like, oh, the visuals are not great, gamers. But, like, I love the story. I love the soundtrack. I love the this. I love the that. Um, that I think it's still worth sitting through. And then just being like, I can be honest about the fact that, like, one element was weak. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to defend it till the end of time, which is something else that I think is an inherently human thing, is if we like something, we tend to want to defend it on all fronts. Um, yeah. <laughs> we, t we tie it into our personality. So if someone turns around and is like, oh, you like that game? Like, that game had awful pacing. You're like, you have awful pacing, die. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> yeah. That's very human, um, and and people tie things into their personality where they're like, well, if you think that a thing that I like is bad, that means that you think I have bad taste. You think that I'm bad, um, and it can be very easy to get into that defensive um, oh, position. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But but that's why I think it's so valuable to consume stuff and be like, you know what? I'm gonna be honest. X element could have been done better. But I liked everything else. Like a, a great example is um, Jello is currently ranking anime openings. He's doing like a top 100 or whatever. And mm -hmm. I, I could never. Um, every time he starts talking about his rankings, people are immediately up in arms. <laughs> hey, Jello. Yeah. Um, <laughs> people are immediately up in arms mm -hmm. because they they tie the quality of not it's not just about the opening it's about the show it's about their enjoyment of the show it's about their memories of the show yeah it's about how, how, how their... dare you say that the first naruto opening sucks shut up i love exactly. Naruto. but you know when he qualifies like well i'm talking about not just the song but also the visuals and also how the credits are like merged into the visuals i've seen multiple comments of people people being like oh once you explained all of that i get it you know, like that okay, makes sense. To me. <laughs> um, and it's that kind of like nuanced stuff that it can be difficult when you have tied your personality to something, um, you know, or or tied your self worth to your taste. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Sometimes but, you, you uh, got you gotta learn not to make like some piece of media your whole personality. And that's hard. But um, I've made in Stars and Time my whole personality, and it's my new favorite game. So if you say it sucks, uh, we have to fight after, after the stream. <laughs> we, we have to fight behind the Denny's. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, gamers, we are at one hour in. So for those of you who have never played in Stars and Time, I'm going to bid you adieu here because we are going to be shifting into the spoilers zone. Yeah! 
Um, I really hope that um, anyone who's watching this as a VOD or who is here and it has been on the fence maybe is a little more intrigued from some of the stuff that you've seen in the background and from what we've been talking about. Um, but now we're going to start getting into the spoiler zone. So we're going to start with um, we've got these separated into two categories. We have spoilers likely based on where the answers might go. And then we've got spoilers definite, like spoilers in the question. Spoilers for sure. <laughs> so we're going to start with the could have spoilers section um, so that if anyone's listening to this as a podcast and you're currently fumbling to try and pause the video. <laughs> we're giving you some time. We're giving you some time. You have to, un to stop this. Pause, pause, pause the podcast. There I'm giving go. you a little bit of time by going into some not super spoilery questions. Yeah. Um, so let's go with this first one. Uh, if you could, if you, Adrian, Me. could voice one character in an official dub of your game, who would you want to voice and why? It's a really good question. Um, I feel like Loop, probably. I mean, that's a strong pick. <laughs> Just because they're little shit. And I love them. But also for some reason, my brain just screamed the king at me. And I'm like, okay, what's <laughs> happening here? Subconscious, do we want to look into that a little bit more? I would love that. That seems fun, but it's just crying the whole time. But whatever. We can <laughs> we can cry the whole time. That seems fun. Like just ooh, 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 ooh. like just ooh, ooh speak the whole time. Ooh, ooh, traveler, ooh, ooh, bright one. Ooh, ooh. Don't be mean. I, I feel like Loop is a very strong choice, though, just for, I mean, that, it's just a fun character. It's just a very fun character. Just, and just knows too much. Hilariously, this is something I have, um, so for like the last week or so, every time I end stream, I have been um, rating people who are playing in Stars in Time. Um, <laughs> you know, just to, just to uh -huh. send some people their way and, uh, you know, uh, and I stick around and I listen for a little while to hear what voices they're doing for the characters because some people just read it and some people are like, I'm going to do a little bit of a voice and some people are like really acting it all out. And almost everybody does Loop's voice the exact same way. <laughs> Hi, Stardust. What's up? What's happening? It's so funny how people see this character and see the way that their dialogue is and they go, I get it immediately i get it and like the, the um, gay the gay hands like the oh my god <laughs> stardust what's happening here do we want to talk about this it's such a testament to how expressive these characters are where you know even people who like self-admittedly some of the people that we have rated have been like i'm not much of an actor but like i'm doing my best um and they have also been like, no, I get it immediately. Like, I, I have picked up what you put down. And it's, yeah, the portraits, the dialogue. It's just so good. And, and I feel like people, even if they don't know everything about Loop, they immediately get when Loop goes from woo -hoo -hoo to, all right, let's get serious for a second here. It's time Star to get serious. All right, Stardust, listen to me. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. I love that so much. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. We've got, if ISAT was ever adapted into an animated media, how much of Seafren's own thoughts do you think would have to be voiced out? For example, in certain scenes to highlight their disconnect with not, what the, uh, not only the characters, but the viewer too. I found this interesting because in anime, having characters speak their own thoughts is very 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 common yeah. even it's like a... here's a still frame and we're gonna pan the camera a bit and then we're just gonna think we're just gonna think the whole time we're and gonna then talk maybe, the whole time yeah maybe we're gonna look to the side and then continue to think and then everyone's like are you okay it's been like 10 minutes <laughs> you've been looking to the side but in western media i feel like it's not very common at all yeah i mean my first thought is that I feel like it could be so interesting if instead of having a one-to-one -one adaptation, if it was like an adaptation where Maribel is the main character mm. and you just get like maybe the same couple of episodes repeated, 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 and it's just that it slowly changes 
Mm. Like, and like the, the whole game, but from Mirabelle's perspective. And so you wouldn't get Sifrin's, um, uh, Sifrin spots at all. It's mm. just that every so often you'd be like, okay, this is the same episode, but what's happening here? Like an end eight time. I just want endless eight again. I thought that was really fun. <laughs> Wow, you're a freak, huh? I'm a freak, but I didn't watch Endless Eight. I just heard about it, so that's why I'm a freak. I'm like a secondhand freak. Oh, okay, uh, okay. But, but, I, but I love the concept so let much. Let me tell you, as a person who watched Endless Eight, it's a bit of a rough ride. Oh, oh, I am sure. I am sure. Like it's it's actually unhinged that they would do eight episodes. You just you can't do that bit for eight episodes. That's can't just oh, do yeah. that. You can't oh, do it's, that. <laughs> oh, it's hard. If anyone who's watched Endless 8, and uh, it's one of my favorite stories of like, you know, people were waiting for Haruhi Season 2, and they were like, <laughs> oh, I can't wait for Haruhi Season 2. Like, I'm so excited. What are they going to do? And they were like, eight of these episodes are the same episode. <laughs> but like, we've re re reanimated every single one of them to be slightly different or like from another perspective. And it's like, you can't, you actually worked for <laughs> It's crazy. It's absolutely insane to me. But I do like, for like a short, um, that would be a really cool concept of just I set from Mirabelle's perspective. Because, yeah, there's something interesting about you need Seafrin's inner dialogue to get in their head. But in an animation, it would bog it down so much. That would be like 70% of the runtime is just Sifrin, like blank face, like, oh my god, I'm so depressed right now. And it's like, yeah, you are. You've said that the five episodes. <laughs> like, the only other thing I could see working is if you had a normal episode and Sifrin's thoughts were like ticker taping along the bottom the entire time <laughs> in text. <laughs> but, but like, that would inherently also not really work the same way because so much of it is, again, the capitalization, the punctuation, the timing. Um, but it would be funny, like, in, I'm looking at the scene that's yeah. playing on the stream right now. <laughs> you know, when he goes, when he goes, hey, in his head, it would be very funny to see that ticker tape along the bottom while everyone else is still chattering. Um, like, I, but, feel, I feel like it would, uh, just because of its nature, it would have to be, like, pretty... Like pretty much just like an, an art piece of its own. Yeah, mm -hmm. someone someone said exactly what I was thinking, like subtitled. And I feel like it would be interesting if you like you wouldn't have Sifrin's monologue, but you would have to switch the subtitles to Sifrin's monologue. <laughs> and so the, you 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 watch it normally, and it's like Sifrin doesn't doesn't think or anything. But then you you turn the subtitles on, and it's just like the whole screen is filled with subtitles. <laughs> That's, you know, that's a pretty novel idea. But yeah, like, when we voiced the character initially, um, we skipped all the inner dialogue uh, in, like, episode one. And <laughs> it only it only took us <laughs> one stream to be like, you can't do that. <laughs> all of Seafrin is in the inner monologue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's so funny because, yeah, it's so common in anime that we even have a term for it. We call them mentals. Um, mm. And it's like, this is a mental line. Um, and we have a default effect that we apply to mental lines just built into our anime sessions when we're recording anime of just like, you're going to apply this effect. It's the same effect. It's like that slight echo that's yes. like, <laughs> just it's very minimal compared to like a environment echo, you know, an environment echo, if you're in a room, you hear this, this big echo, um, very slight mental echo. Um, yeah, except some shows that don't do it and it drives you nuts. Um, mm. but most, most do. And it is a very industry standard thing to just have one that you recycle for shows because there's too many shows yeah. that have <laughs> mentals, That's almost just all thing. of them. <laughs> and when you are an anime voice actor, the way that you do mentals is also like very standardized because we we've watched so much anime we've consumed so much anime that you're like yeah i know how to do this and it's just hey this is me talking and this is me talking in my head suddenly i'm down here and i'm mm -hmm. quiet and i'm thinking to myself it's like not quite whispering but it is to yourself um yeah like i feel like having those like i feel like it would be honestly like since someone said 
musical, I'm just thinking about the musical or like a, <laughs> an actual play because in actual plays you do have monologues and so that's why it would be perfect for Sifrin, like just Sifrin doing his Hamlet style monologue. Soliloquy. Yeah, yeah, where it's just like everyone else is literally frozen and it's like, all right, I'm just gonna start talking. And then, Turn to the audience. What do you think of this shit? Yeah. Crazy. And then literally the only character that would interact with Sifrin during their monologues would be Loop. And it would mm. be really jarring the first time because it's like, you're everyone's supposed to be frozen during the, the monologue. I don't know what you're doing just talking back to me right now. Oh, uh, you're so right. Or like, or or even if if there's no monologues, uh, I I do remember seeing a play that was like in German, and they would put this like I think it was maybe an opera even, uh like you would have the subtitles at the like at the top of the of the scene, like you would have to look up, mm -hmm. and I feel like that could be interesting to have the monologues there, where you would have like a, a sound effect, and then people would know to look up to see different spots. Mm. Uh, like I, I feel like that would be super, super interesting. Or maybe find a like, yeah, like having to find a way that is like very like, why, why is everything stopped in time while you're having this monologue and just really, really put a lot of attention to to that in some way. Like I, I feel like there's. But yeah, it would have to be cut down. Is the thing <laughs> like in, yeah. no, no matter what medium? Like this is this is a video game, so like you're you're just here. I'm sorry, but like in any other kind of medium, it's like no, I'm sorry, we have to cut this down. Otherwise, that's gonna be the whole thing. <laughs> well, I mean, it also means that you you chose the perfect medium to tell yeah. the story <laughs> exactly because. Yeah. Oh man, I, even like even all of these ideas that we're talking about, where it's like, oh, what if you did it like this or like that? I feel like would be slightly harder to sit through than a video game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas the video game is hands-on, so even if there's a lot of dialogue, you will eventually get back to playing the video game. And there's going to be, you know, movement and action in between. Whereas, like, a play is like, sit there and listen to Seafrin tell you <laughs> exactly yeah. what a how much of a bad time they're having. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Although I do love, like, the performance art element of what you're saying. Like, if Loop was able to move during, especially if Loop was in the audience. Oh my god! It would be so or, good! Or, <laughs> or like up in a balcony and just like you know like, talking from up on the balcony yeah loops just walking around literally the whole room like going into yes. like w when it's like all right you're going elsewhere i'm just gonna watch the show <laughs> like very performance already very like i'm going to interact with the audience i'm going to you know be involved or like messing with things, you know, messing with like the curtain or whatever. You can have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, I feel like that would be so good. <laughs> oh, I love that. That is, man, you and gotta like, get- even, even, even the, the time loop thing would be so interesting in a play because maybe you would, you would kind of fake it as like, oh, we, we, we mess with, oh, we mess this one line. We have to <laughs> from the we top. We have to go back. Yeah, from the top. Like you would have like a director, and the director could be Loop going like, "Oh, you messed this one up." From the top. <laughs> yeah, the cut. It like places get everybody back to where they were. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. It's so funny where you know, like again, because we look at these great character portraits, our first thought immediately is animation. And but... then when you when you talk through it a bit more, you're like, "But what if?" But what if though? A play. I mean, a play is very thematically. Like, know, it's right. accurate. Like, yeah, it's pretty relevant. That's I feel like that good. would. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> really makes you think. Oh, I love that. And let me tell you, as an actor, um, there's very few things that could get me back to the stage because I hate memorizing lines. As the <laughs> yep. Um, the only play I have told people I would go back to the stage for is Little Shop of Horrors. That's like my favorite play of all oh, time. Oh, uh, yep. Mm hmm. I would go, if you turned to me and you were like, I am producing Little Shop of Horrors, I want you to be Audrey. I'd be like, yep, okay, you got me. Um, <laughs> I, I have been convinced. If you turned around and said, there is going to be an In Stars in Time play, I'd be like, <laughs> all right. All right, let's go. Honestly, you know what I would love in a In Stars in Time play? I would want to play the change god so bad. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. like, and, and that's it. That's why it's a small role. I don't have to learn how to act. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just the change guy. All right, bye. <laughs> oh, I love that. 
I, I would love that. <laughs> Oh man, and this uh, this really makes this is so looping back in the conversation, Lamau. Um, <laughs> some when we were talking about like adding voice actor to the game, and I was like, well, but it would change like the vibe of the game. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say is I would rather see the game if you had money to spare. Mm -hmm. um, I would rather see the game translated into other languages. Oh yeah, like that is that is definitely something that we want to do. It's just that I I wrote a little too much, and so that's pretty, <laughs> that's a little expensive. So we're waiting a bit to see yeah, if we nope, actually makes, have the budget. <laughs> makes perfect sense, but yeah, I mean, voice acting is also really expensive. So yeah. <laughs> If you turned around and you were like, we're going to add voice acting to the game, I'd be like, Adrian, I don't think that's such a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian, there's more, like, you should maybe translate it. Yep, yep, You should yep, translate yep. it in other languages. That's, um, mm -hmm. I, would, I would much rather see that. And I'd be so interested to see how some of the naturalistic dialogue would get translated, even though I can't understand. I don't speak any other languages. Um, but I love just hearing people talk about language localization oh, theory. Yeah. And I, I see, like, I, I know... I don't know Japanese, but apparently the Japanese localization is really, really, really incredible. Oh, uh, and, yay. and I have seen um, some people who speak both English and Japanese kind of talk about uh, some of the uh, choices that um, Kakehashi has made. Uh, and I'm like, that seems really, really good. They did such an amazing job. Honestly, like some of the questions that they asked me were sometimes so pointed, but I was like, oh, this is going to be so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, you are asking so many interesting questions. <laughs> I remember when Undertale was being localized into Japanese. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the, like, big, I, I, don't, I wouldn't call it a controversy, but, like, the thing that, like, was on people's minds and that people were talking about quite a bit were um, the pronouns that the characters yes. use. Mm -hmm. Because Japanese pronouns are, they're not how people refer to you. It's how you refer to yourself. Um, and there are some pronouns that have very much fallen out of fashion that nobody really uses. But um, Sans used oida, mm -hmm. which is like farmer country bumpkin kind of way to refer to oneself. Um, and the Japanese fandom exploded. They thought it was so funny and weird. Um, and it's that kind of conversation that I was like, huh, you, know, you don't really think about that. Like the difference between... You know, I'm sure that th that they had to maybe think about like um, with Sifrin, like is it is is Sifrin a watashi or a boku or a you know like what? Someone, someone mentioned it. I'll, I'll I'll see if I can find the post again. Uh, but the difference, uh, I, I had my own suggestions as someone who's only watched anime. I was like, I feel like this could be good. Uh, mm -hmm. But they, of course, they made their own choices. I think we had. Uh, I think they put aura for. Um, for Bonnie, actually. Oh, but, but isn't that, that a cute choice? Yeah, I, but that was a while back. I don't think I can find it again, but I'm sure it's on Tumblr somewhere. Um, but yeah, like, and I, I read the um, Undertale localization uh, book that they made, and that was fascinating. Uh, like all of the all of the details and everything that they thought about was just so fun to read about. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. According to chat, Seifern uses Boku. Aw, cute! Which is, like, cutesy masculine. My cute um, Boku guy. Yeah, little, little Boku guy. <laughs> what is I, like, lip use? Do you guys know? Oh, yeah. And then I feel like for, like, uh, for, for French, since that is the one language I actually know, like, I was actually thinking about how to do the pronouns, because uh, French is one of those super duper gendered languages uh and, and doesn't actually have like a, a like an uh, a non-gendered pronoun like they mm. are some that have that uh have been uh kind of created but that are i don't think have really entered a uh, general right uh, right thing but like it's and but i feel like when we do actually get to a uh, French uh, translation, I'm like, yeah, I don't care. We should use those. <laughs> yeah, I think. I mean, that's the kind of that's the kind of decision as the creator that you can be like, I have deemed it. Uh, apparently, Loop also uses Boku, which is interesting. Cute. Oh, I love that. That is so interesting to think about. Yeah. Because in that instance. Um, okay, we're in spoiler territory. I gave you guys this warning 15 yeah, yeah, minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's in, go. <laughs> let's go. 
in that instance, it means that Japanese players get slightly more of a hint towards Loop's yeah. um, identity mm -hmm. that English players don't. Where English players, I mean, obviously... Well, the, the, one thing, the one thing that, because like the difference is that uh, like at the very beginning, I think we just missed it, uh, that uh, Loop goes, you can address me with the royal we, and I know that there's no equivalent in, in Japanese. Mm -hmm. And that was also a hint. So Japanese doesn't get this hint, but in Japanese they do get the Boku hint. Right, exactly, yeah. Of like, okay, these characters refer to themselves in the same way. Um, but in English, it's more of a subtle like, oh, they're similar, but it's not quite the same. Um, and we already have another character who uses they, them. So the the precedent has already been set. Oh, they're literally talking about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> they got it. Um, Loop knows what's going on mm -hmm, on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, but like we, in, in English, that means English players are like, okay, the precedent has already been set for a character who uses they, them. We have Bonnie. Um, so when this character turns around and goes, oh, you can use they, them for me, it's like, okay, you know, this has already been pre-established to be a world where they, them is common. <laughs> um, and so Loop tricks English players a little bit with that. Whereas I suppose Japanese players were probably like, hmm, they both use Boku. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the Royal We would not work. The only thing I could think of is, um, I don't know if this is what the Japanese localization actually did, but if I was thinking about it, it would be like um, calling themselves with a honorific type joke of like, you could call me Loop San, you know, like, and that, cause that's very, that's very hoity toity and that's very full of yourself to do. Um, so like maybe they they did a similar joke, but it does not give you the same hint as Royal We. Yeah, and and I, I remember when I uh, gave uh, Kakehashi the script, I I did try to add as many like notes as I could, where it's like, all right, they're saying this thing. This is kind of the subtext here. This is what's happening here, uh, so that uh, so that hopefully uh, the the Japanese version would also give the same kind of hence as the English, English version would. Mm. And it's uh, so interesting because I, I love localization theory in that realm of like, you have to communicate things to the audience, but there are some things that simply do not translate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, a character calling themselves, yeah, it, someone suggested like maybe Loop Sama. I'm not sure what they did. Um, but if that was the case, you know, if if this was Japanese first and Loop made a joke about calling themselves Loop Sama, um, as, an, as an English speaker, I'd have to be like, okay, how do I translate this? to be this, a same kind of joke. And maybe I would land on like the royal we, at, like maybe I would end up back in the same place. Um, but maybe, you know, going from the other direction, I might be like, well, uh, maybe like King, you know, call me King Loop. And well, that that's whole other different implication mm -hmm, because mm -hmm, a character mm -hmm. shows up who's named King. Yep. And it's like, oh, okay. You know, where you're, you could accidentally create a connection that you don't mean to. Um, or you could accidentally foreshadow something wrong. And when we're doing anime, so often we're getting it episode by episode that like that kind of stuff can happen if you're not careful. Um, I'm sure. You can accidentally foreshadow things of like, well... Uh, you should have told us before. <laughs> um, and that's why you have to like, you have to really think things, these things over. So like if you go, oh, I'm going to have this character say, I'm King so-and-so. And then you have to be like, all right, hold on, pause is this a world where an actual king could show up? Mm -hmm. If so, you know, what are the odds that that king might be important? If so, will this joke accidentally create some kind of confusion or link? Um, and it's it was something really, really interesting to think about. I'm going to, I'm going to springboard off that into a question that I personally wanted to ask you. It's not on the list. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a question I personally wanted to ask you, and I'm going to springboard using an example from an anime that I directed. So there is a there's an anime that I directed that I talk about all the time. It's called Tribe Nine. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, created by Kodaka-san, the, the creator of Danganronpa. And I love this creator's worlds and characters because they're all so wacky and goofy. Mm -hmm. um, even the characters who are like super, super serious in the end usually start with kind of wacky designs and like goofy you know 
facades. Um, and I love that. I love when a goofy character can become serious. Um, and there, uh, because of that, I was like, okay, when we're when we're doing it in English, I would really like to introduce like accents and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a character who shows up who is foreign. He says he's foreign, um, but he never specifies from where. And so it was in my court to like pick an accent for oh, him. Uh -huh. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to do it by auditions. So we had auditions and I picked the actor that I thought was best for the character. Like he just brought the right energy and he brought the right voice. And he's an amazing actor. His name's Philip, Philip Sacramento. And Philip Sacramento is Northern Irish. So he just did his natural accent. It's just Northern Irish. But that means I have now had to um, marry myself to if this character comes back if there's ever a season two if there's ever a the, if the game gets localized in english if you know anything like this happens and he ever mentions where he's from yeah, <laughs> or if another character shows up who is where he's from i have to marry myself to the idea that all those people in this universe will have northern irish accents mm -hmm. regardless of where it ends up being so he might turn around and be like, I'm from China and I have and, to- And you're fucked. <laughs> I just have to go, okay, in this universe, Chinese people have Northern Irish accents done and dusted. You know, you have to, you have to stick by yeah. that decision. And so the question I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. is, even if it does not necessarily end up one-to-one -one with quote-unquote where they're supposed to be from, because obviously the, the the countries in In Stars and Time are fictional. Um, they could be related to real-life countries, but maybe not. You know, like, you don't have to 100% confirm deny. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. But if you were picking any accent for these characters, because it does mention in the game that some of them have accents, um... Number one, would you want them to have accents if there was voice media? And number two, what would you pick? Yeah, you you were threading so close to a country question and I was going to have to ODL blast you into smithereens. <laughs> you told uh, me no country <laughs> questions. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but for this one, I actually did answer it somewhat, so it's fine. Um, like, let's say, well, this is a game written in English, uh, but... Um, so, Mirabel and Isabel and everyone in Vogard would be having French accents for sure. Mm. Uh, like, whether it's like a, a very strong uh, French accent or not. Uh, and uh, Bonnie would have a French Creole accent. Mm. Uh, obviously, Odile would have a Japanese accent. Uh, like, I feel like, like not stereotypical, you know what I mean? Like, just like, mm -hmm. like that you're like, oh, that's... That's not, that's not how someone who's American, like purebred American, whatever, would be saying that word. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, Sifrin... I don't, like, there's no such thing as, like, a... Like, I feel like it would be really interesting for Sifrin to say a bunch of different words in, like, different sense, you know? Where it's mm. like, genuinely, I don't know where you're from. Like mm -hmm. you are saying some words in in uh, in the way that someone from this country would say it. You're saying this other word in some way that this country would say it. You roll your R's. Your A's are kind of weird. Like just a bunch of where you're like, what's happening here? Like and right. and and I feel I love like that. And, and say same thing with the king. Obviously, um, before anyone asks, uh, you uh, you crazy would be having a French accent. Also, uh, just just like. Like that would mean I I would like I would probably hire someone where it's like just create an accent that is literally every accent at once. <laughs> mm. Uh or, or oh, like, I love that. Or like just not not necessarily an accent either, but like a, a cadence. Like some some something where it's like this is strange. And of course, like creating it from whole cloth would be kind of hard, so probably inspired by by some places or countries that I won't say because that would be giving the game away too much. Right, uh, exactly. But yeah, like just like a, 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 an accent where it's like, what's happening? 
like this and not like just something slight where it's like this is a little weird <laughs> i don't know what's happening here like that's how i would imagine it if i had to really like a like weird, weird little guy weird little guy what's weird happening little guy yeah so yeah, and then, like, I guess the second part of that question is just, would you prefer that over, you know, if someone turned around and was like, here's the official voices, and they were all, like, American, or all one thing. Oh, I would, would that, hate that. I would hate, that, hate that so that. much. Yeah. Uh, I, I, listen, the reason that there's so much French shit in, in, in the game is because I am so annoyed with how everyone thinks. Uh, a fantasy story is either British or American, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and so that's why I was like, all right, I'm creating a fantasy story. But if you think it's British or American, I'm gonna come to your house and put <laughs> Lego all over the floor. And I have had people say that to me to my face, where it's like, is this Britain? It's obviously fantasy Britain, and I'm like, I'm gonna kill you and I'll and kill you eat, and eat your soul. Along with fries and mayonnaise. That's what I'm going to do. It's How great dare you? because I'm I'm so there with you where, you know, again, I, I direct anime dubs and so often anime dubs are Americanized. Mm -hmm. You're using American accents, but there's really nothing stopping me from picking any random show and being like, this is going to be Australian. Everybody's going to be Australian. But the thing is, I know that there would be backlash. If I oh, did. Yeah. But I, I'm thinking, was it Xenoblade that had them speak with a Scottish yes. accent? And that's like out of nowhere, but I love that so much. Like, it's and like, it's so why? good. That's, and, and that adds, like, it, it's such a strange choice, but it adds so much personality and so much uh, imagery to this world. Because uh, otherwise, they're just like a like, boring American. It's like, all right, we just. Like, all right, <laughs> this is just how they are. They're just everyday man, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and they people are pointing out the the Welsh cat girl exactly. Yes, because you you've heard a cat girl voice before. You have heard the American cat girl. You've heard her a million zillion times. She has been in so much media, and it's always the same voice. So really, the only thing that you can do to make characters unique is either go against type, um, or an accent can really make a character go, oh, you know, I've never heard this version of there, a cat girl. There's something different here. Yeah. So I, I love, I, I was curious what you were going to say, because I, I feel like on the one hand, there is a, there is a fear of alienating your audience if you go against the grain, if you go against the norm, but also, you know, as a creator, you have a strong vision sometimes of, of of questions like this, so I was I was really curious what you were gonna say. I'm, it, it's, I'm... it's interesting because like when it comes to voice acting, people are gonna notice if you go against type. Mm -hmm. but, but like I said, there are a lot of people that came to me thinking, like maybe maybe you've seen me do a post about it, which I answered someone's question, and some that someone's question was, why is there so much French symbolism to the game? And so, like, dude, I wonder why. I wonder, I wonder. I wonder there's so much French symbolism to the game. Could be, it could not be because I'm not American. There's no way. And it's like, there's such a, a, a an assumption from every corner of the internet and every corner of the world that it's like, if you're making something that is in English, you're obviously American mm. or maybe you're British. And it's like, my dude, I, I had to learn English. <laughs> I, a lot of people that do not speak English as their first language are forced to learn English, especially if they are on social media. Like, because this is a because American wants to do the reverse. And we have to get, like, we have to talk to each other. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that is just the one language, like, for better or worse, that is the one language that most people on this earth do speak but then that also means that when you do speak english people just assume oh you must be from some place in america it's like i'm mm -hmm. sorry i'm I had to learn this to survive <laughs> i got dragged in the iset discord a little bit because i uh we were talking about name pronunciations 
um, and how the the characters' names are pronounced not the way that most streamers start yeah, saying it, their names. I think it's very funny. I, I have my own way of, uh, of, of pronouncing the names, but I, I'm... I'm never gonna drag someone for pronouncing them the like the Americanized way. <laughs> mm -hmm. But of course, you know, we were talking about that, and I was like, well, I think it has to do with how you read names if you're approaching it from, and I said, an American perspective, because obviously I'm American, and a bunch of people were like, oh, I'm American now, I guess. Like I, <laughs> I have been inducted into your into your land where we're all American and we all read the names wrong, and I'm like, all right, well, you know. I was, I'm sorry, you're right, you know, the, sorry for being American. <laughs> the, <laughs> English, <laughs> the English primary language perspective is what I meant. Yeah, um, I, I get that for sure. Uh, and uh, yeah, like, I, I was just talking to you earlier about that when we, uh, we were both like, okay, so how should we call each other since we have to talk like with voices? It's like, all right, you're Vixen and I'm Adrian. And you were like making sure of how to pronounce my name and like i don't when i'm in france i'm not adrian i'm adrienne but mm -hmm. i'm never gonna tell someone to call me adrienne because adrian is my spy name uh i'm <laughs> i if you call me adrienne i'm like oh <laughs> no i don't go oh i go oh <laughs> oh and you know, it, it's, some, it's. Nous sommes ensemble, nous sommes français. But like, really, Adrian is like, all right, I know, I, I know, <laughs> I know who you are, and you're not French. <laughs> it's funny because, like, when, when, again, if, especially if you're an American, um, you want to pronounce things correctly because there's such a stereotype that we don't care or that we're just going to steamroll over, yeah, you yeah, know, like, yeah. we're just going to say it our way, the American way. Um, but. Sometimes, like, it's more interesting to hear how people are going to say your name in their own accent. I think it's so fascinating, and I love that. <laughs> like, when I was in Italy, um, people called me Maritza. Oh, um, so nice. Which, very cute. I loved it a lot. I would not be like, um, it's Marissa, you know, like, whatever. It's, it's so much better to be like, oh, yeah, you, okay, so you say it Maritza. Um, so like, it's fine, you know, to have various pronunciations of your name or uh, yeah. in, in Japan, it, I mean, well, in Japan, they called me Lenti-san, but um, <laughs> it, it would be Marisa, um, which is similar, but slightly not the way that, um, I would, you know, say like, oh yeah, Marissa versus Marisa. Um, they don't have that uh sound, the Marissa, they don't have that uh, um, and it's like, that's cool though you know like that's fine um yeah. it's it's just oh i love i love language theory yeah someone is saying i have a good english accent i do not but thank you for saying <laughs> <laughs> listen i'm never i'm never gonna do all the work to say three i'm like fuck that this is free <laughs> one two three thank you i i don't give a shit about that <laughs> no well and afraid. also, you know, if, if, again, speaking from the American perspective, there are so many American accents. Like, that there's, too. <laughs> there's not just one. So, like, I have met people who live here who have something comparative to your accent. It doesn't make it, you know, any less a foreign accent. It's just an accent that you hear here where you're like, yeah, okay, I've he heard people say this. I was watching a video recently. It was it was a game theory video. <laughs> and I noticed that Matt Pat says doll differently than me like like a like a rag doll um doll? yeah i say doll and he was saying like doll doll a doll and i was like oh yeah i guess some people do say it doll but to me that sounds so wrong I'm like it's a doll um and and then you have regionalisms as well which gets into a whole other thing where i'll say pocketbook and people will look at me like i'm an insane person pocketbook. Um, yeah. when i mean i mean purse uh, oh yeah <laughs> like nobody says pocketbook but i say pocketbook because my mom said pocketbook um to mean purse yet now everyone in the chat is like what are you talking about there, like, there's, yeah there, there's one that's even worse for me and that's like bagel it's like mm -hmm. it's bagel or bagel and like i don't know which one's the right one which one is gonna make it so that people don't make fun of me is it bagel or is it bagel bagel Bagel. bagel, bagel, got it. Especially, <laughs> especially if you're ever in New York, you gotta call it a bagel. Like bagel, bagel. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I have all these I have these New Yorkisms inside me. They are they are part of who I am. And uh I'll say them and people will be like, What are you talking about? But like that, you know, it makes you or a character unique where like I uh, what's what's a good example? I put the I put the word Ajita in a script once. Um <laughs> And the person who was directing that anime was like, what the hell is this word? I have never seen it in my life. Um, <laughs> and Ajita is like when someone's annoying you. Yeah. Like, oh, you're, you're giving me Ajita. We're giving me Ajita, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. But he was like, I've never seen this word. And he had specifically had never seen it written down. He was like, it's incomprehensible to me written down. Um, but I think it's so interesting of just like what seems like normal speech for one person and when it comes to name pronunciations what seems normal to you is going to be completely different from somebody else we're like when we started um the voice playthrough we said cifrin because it's eyes and that's just how you know yeah listen i wrote cifrin. it wrong on the twitter thing but i didn't say anything because i was embarrassed it's not like it's not cifrin or whatever like it's it is cifrin like that's how, that's, different. listen that's how i say it if i was really french i would go um actually uh, um actually let's, oh wait let me try it again um actually uh it's cifrin uh cifrin with the with the <laughs> that i can't do cifrin. but yeah like i say cifrin and, and it's just that I, I said it like i wrote it wrong and i was like it's cifrin it's a cifrin and i'm like that's cifrin that sounds horrible just say cifrin <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's just, that's just like the, sh the 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 sheep and sheep and I'm like that's like ship and sheep and I'm like that's the same sound but it's not <laughs> same thing. No. <laughs> you tricked us. I'm so sorry. I, I can't edit tw tweets otherwise I would uh, change that. I'm so sorry. It's it it is different. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, w was it Isabo though, or is it Isabo? It's the same thing. Where uh, if if I was French, it would be Isa uh, Isabo. Mm. Uh, but I, when I say it without thinking, it's Isabo. Mm. Yeah, so oh, maybe that funny? I, maybe I even said the same thing. But like I was kind of, listen, I was so annoyed that no one realized it was French, but I really went all, all out for the French. But now I'm like, mm. I don't even say it that way. So, <laughs> I'm like, um, actually, all right, listen to me, listen to me very closely, everyone. So it's Sifra, uh, Isabeau, Mirabel, Odile, uh, and uh, Bonnie, 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 Bonnie. Even that, I don't even know. Bonnie, yeah, <laughs> Bonnie, and, and, and their full name is um, Boniface. There, there you go, Boniface. Yeah, obviously, it's not Boniface, it's Boniface. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god. Is, it's it's oh like you guys god. can't even read French. Honestly, <laughs> disgusting. Boniface, thank you. I got dragged for my French in that one stream. <laughs> <laughs> you did! I feel so bad! I'm like, I feel your pain so hard! I feel your pain! I feel your pain! <sighs> I can't. I can't. I was. I was doing my best. I've always just been doing my best. Here's a funny anecdote. This is. I'm. We're completely off track, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> when I was in school, so I took French from third grade to ninth grade. Um, wow. For six years. Time. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't remember a damn thing about it because uh, I suck. Um, and I have. I have terrible memory. I can't remember anything. My mom will be like, "Do you remember?" And I'm like, "No." Um, but I do remember this one memory of, uh, we went on a trip to, uh, Quebec. <laughs> Difference. Yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, um, we took a bus and, uh, my French teacher was like, okay, while you're in Quebec, you have to speak French. Like no English allowed. <laughs> um, and then we were like, okay. And, and that was normal. Like in our French class, um, we were not allowed to speak French, uh, not allowed to speak French, not allowed to speak English. Um, so if you had to go to the restroom or, or be excused for any reason, you had to ask in French. You had to remember the French, um, phrase. So we were used to like, Hey, you know, do this. Um, and so, you know, we went to, uh, McDo mm -hmm. and, McDo, uh, yeah. McDo, <laughs> and, <laughs> And I was like, okay, I'm going to do my best, you know? And so I'm ordering and I don't even remember how to order, but you know, I was, I was ordering an hamburger and frites and, uh, uh, coca mm -hmm. and 
the I was like, okay, I did it. I, I ordered everything I wanted to order and then um, in French and then mm-hmm. the guy behind the counter in English goes, do you want dessert? And I was like, ah, no! Yeah, yeah, listen, I felt the same thing when I was like, actually, this, this is very funny to me now. I'm so sorry in advance. But when I went to Japan, uh, I had to take like a, like I was so lost. I could not read Google Maps for once. I was like, all right, I'm going to take a taxi to get to where I need to go. Uh, and I was really struggling because I don't speak Japanese even a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we were just struggling. He finally understood where I, where I was going. And then he's driving. And then he turns towards me and he goes, America? And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no. no. <laughs> but, but I feel bad. Americans. <laughs> I'm so sorry I let you down. Uh, but But yeah. I mean, now, you know, as an adult, if I went to Quebec, I would probably not even try, first of all. Um, But back then I was, uh, I must have been 13. So, you know, I was like, please humor me. I'm I'm trying trying so hard. I'm trying, I'm trying. (laughs) I could tell a funny Japan story too before we move on. Um, uh, The the hilarious thing about learning Japanese through anime is that (laughs) it teaches you how to speak wrong as a joke. Mm -hmm. Um. Because nobody in Japan actually talks like anime. Uh, yeah, everybody already mm-hmm. knows this story. But uh, for the VOD watchers who maybe made it this far and don't know me, um, there is a phrase in Japanese in anime, ikuze, which means to go um, or let's go or, you know, it's... it's, it's a very, yeah, exactly. A very <laughs> emphatic way to say let's go. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know this phrase because I played Spectrobes, of course, where they say, Honk the And I was like, yeah, okay, Ikuze. Um, and we uh, were getting toured around by a good friend of ours. Shout out to Miniyaki san. And he was like, oh, I'm going to get us like a rental car. And the way that their rental cars work is that um, it charges you when you start the car, not when you rent the car. Um, so he was like swiping his card. It was very interesting. I'd never seen this in a car before. Um, and he finally got it working and he was like, okay, it's working. Um, let's go. And I was like, yeah, let's go. Ikuze. And he started laughing in my face. He was like, you sound like an anime protagonist, like a little boy. (laughs) I was like, no. Oh, no. I mean, that's, oh, no. I, I actually, that's uh, languages for you. I have I have one last Japanese anecdote. Because mm-hmm. I, I went to Japan. That was for the Tokyo Game Show because we were showing off in, Star, in Stars of Time, actually. Uh, and uh, thankfully, I had um, Gabby, who works at uh, Armor Games, uh, to actually speak Japanese because I don't speak Japanese. Um, and so at some point, like, she had to go. And so I was like, okay, can you, can you tell me what I need to say so that people can play the demo like what do i need to to say give me a line she was like yeah you need to tell them that this is a, a time loop rpg game and i go okay how do i say that and she was like time loop rpg this and i was like oh <laughs> so, not so bad so it's fine like it's, they just say time time loop and she's like yeah <laughs> so very easy time loop rpg this yeah the great thing about japanese is that there's a bunch of loan words oh, yeah. and and the hilarious thing about, you know, all of all of our, like, belly aching over, how do I say this in French? Or, like, you know, I want to say, you know, croissant as opposed to croissant. Um, all of that is thrown out the window in Japanese. They go, here are our loan words. Here's how we say it. Yeah. And that is the correct way to say it. If you say cupcake, I'm going to look at you like you're crazy. But if you say couple cakey, I go, oh, couple cakey. Hi. <laughs> uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They don't care. They're like, I, I have my loan word and I'm going to use it exactly as is. Oh my God. I, I, I'm going to, I'm still off track, but I want to talk about more translation theory because I think it's really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, they have, their word for laptop is pasacon, which is personal computer, which is kind of truncated. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. And in Chobits, which is an anime about yeah. mm-hmm. computer people, um, they call them persicons, just laptops essentially, but they're like women. Um, and when they dubbed it into English, they decided to keep persicom as a as a it's word. True, yeah. <laughs> so they were like, oh, these are persicoms, and that became like iconic to that series of like these are persicoms, and it's like that's just the Japanese word for laptop. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> 
I love shit like that. I love that. And so it kind of becomes a feature of, again, like in Stars and Time without intention of like, this is a world where there are French pastries and we call them by their right names or as far as, you know, <laughs> you know. Um, this is a boulangerie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I saw boulangerie and I was like, oh, okay. Uh, and I got it wrong. I called it a butcher shop, but I knew it was French immediately. Um, and I was like, okay, there's there's French in this world. And that becomes an element of In Stars and Time, even though that is also just an element of you as a creator where you're like i'm just putting this in here because in, yeah, because obviously. people need to know that this is france god damn it i had to add croissants and baguettes to this fucking game so people would get it you only <laughs> understand like very basic like stereotypes i'll give you stereotypes motherfucker here's a fucking croissant let's just put croissant in there because that's one people know yeah only no stereotypes they didn't oh. get they didn't get the flirterly it's fine isn't that funny? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have questions, it's true. <laughs> we went way off topic, right, but right, right, this right, is great. Right. <laughs> this is great. Um, okay, here. Um, is there anything you noticed while listening to ISAT voice acted that read completely differently than you thought it would? Uh, every, every you just enhanced every different monologue uh, that, like you. i again i had n no thoughts head empty i just just every character has my voice let's be real in my head mm. but here i was like oh damn when you put like emotions to it this is a lot better <laughs> <laughs> When, when someone who actually know how, how, knows how to how to like speak and voice act does this, this is like pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I, I guess what they were maybe asking is like, were there any quiet moments that ended up loud where like you thought it would be quiet, but it was like, oh no, they're they're screaming, they going for it. But I not, also feel not like not really are, are coming to mind, really. Yeah. <laughs> and and also like you know we were talking about this before, like the way that you formatted the text informed us so much yeah you know like um if if the text was really big like i started screaming you know i was like look at this big text you know this is where i need to and like re-watching it i have rewatched these vods a lot um re-watching it uh i often will see places where i'm like oh based on the size of that text maybe i would have gone bigger or i would have gone smaller like i can see places where i made slightly weird choices but at the same time i was like I remember being out of breath and I'm trying to keep up with the text as it's going because I'm not the one controlling it. It was, it was, Jello was, you know, pressing through the dialogue. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I got to keep up with the dialogue. I can't dilly dally too long. I can't, I can't own the space the way I might want to if I was on stage. Um, because we are, we are trying to present this to people and not have them sit here for a bajillion hours. Um, and then, you know, if you are screaming and elevating the emotions at a certain point, it's just going to start coming out of you the way that it does. Mm. Um, you know, it's like, this is just going to happen. Like when we got to, um, Bonnie's corrupted friend quest. Yes. And I was oh, crying. God. Oh, God. Yes. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I was crying. And at a certain point, when you are mid cry, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. Like, it's <laughs> it's just going to sound the way it's going to sound. It, 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 like, it, 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 it just comes out. Yeah. You just lose control of it. So, whatever was on the screen was still informing me. But at a certain point, I was like, well, you know, whatever happens, happens. Um, and, and that is also, I mean, it's a symptom of not only the environment of I am reading this off someone else clicking through the dialogue, um, but also the environment of we're live, you know, um, there are no do overs, although occasionally we'd be like, whoops, I messed that up. I'm going to mm -hmm. do it again. Um, but there, for the most part, you can't sit there and redo, 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 redo. Like you get one read and then it's like, you're going with that. Um, and that, you know, again, it's, it's more like live theater than it is like voice acting. Mm, yeah, absolutely. I feel that for sure. There was a second part to this question that was directed at me, and I just yeah. went off on a completely different tangent. What does it say? <laughs> um, as the cast developed, everyone had to make several character choices. Do you have any favorites? Uh, that's for you, isn't it? It was for me. You it's can also you. answer, of course. But I, I uh, think one of my favorites was um, 
sometimes when Mirabelle started screaming, Jello would drop the voice. Um, <laughs> just that, like, yeah. like <laughs> wouldn't even try going super high or would just allow it to come out as it came out of just, just screamed at you. And it was like, oh my God, I love yeah. it. I think it's a, I think it turned out to be like a hilarious character quirk at a certain point. Yeah, I, 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 I love, I loved every portion of the whole thing. So I don't, I don't have like a favorite part where I'm like, that was really good. I'm like, the whole thing was really funny. I loved it. <laughs> really funny, really emotional, really, yeah. Really oh. good. I'm glad, I'm glad. Yeah, we, again, we're talking about like the difference between, you know, I work in voice acting. So I'm like, I have very particular, here's like a very specific thing. But like a good performance can connect with someone regardless. You're just like, it's good. I don't know. It's good. Like, shut up. Don't yeah. talk to me. And I, uh, even when it, it doesn't come to actual like voice performances, but I've watched a lot of streamers that voice characters and they just have a terrible, awful voice for a character, but it just becomes their voice. Mm -hmm. uh, just like thinking about Ace Attorney, like I've watched multiple streamers play Ace Attorney and they just have the voice, the, the worst voices that are, like the, the game grumps playing Ace Attorney and then Aaron's only single voice for women is just like, ah, I went in and then just, and then you can have like really emotional moments even though it's a terrible voice. It's just really fun. <laughs> it is fun. I mean, it's something that like, you can't get in professional spaces where it's like at a certain point, you know, you can't deviate too much because there are yeah. voices that are just too stupid right yeah. like, they're too stupid to have emotional moments with but the great thing about stream voice acting is like you can do a stupid voice and then it's like all right now i get to hear that stupid voice cry yeah um, i get to hear what that sounds like and it's really really fun i know um and i i said this before but like um Odile became British in my head because of Savvy and like yeah, the super really... <laughs> the super like dry way that she talks I'm like yeah like that's now embedded in my brain even though logically as we were going through I think I said it in the stream I was like Odile's like I, probably a Japanese accent, right? Yeah. Like, probably that's what it's supposed to be. But, but now, in my now, head, retroactively, uh, Japanese people have British accents now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is. You can <laughs> pull a Tribe Nine and be like, "It's, um, it's fine. You know, it's a fantasy world. I can do what I want." Um, or like, you know, if we were doing this for real, I uh, Will as Izabo is like for me the one that yeah. like this Will's mannerisms, regardless of voice. Will's mannerisms transfer over so well to a character like Oh Isabel. my god, yeah. Like, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't talked to Will a little bit. I'm like, oh god, that's just Isabeau. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's your actual voice! <laughs> and then, of course, again, we're, we're an hour eep in, eep? We're an hour eep into spoiler territory. Um, because Jello pre-spoiled himself on loop, that once we, was so good. Once we get to that point and he starts mimicking me back at me, I'm like, that's the most ingenious shit ever. Oh my um, god, yeah. And and I didn't know. I didn't know what he was doing. So I was like, why is Loop like not not as funny this time around? Like it's not <laughs> Yeah. Loop, loop, I was like, is Jello tired? Oh no. Like that was my first thought. And then as it went on, I was like, he's doing that thing that I do. Um, Cause I do this thing where if a character is listing off a list, I will change how quick I jump on the comma. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I got to go to the store and get milk, bread, egg, and cheese. And I'll go milk, bread, egg, cheese. Like just change that a little bit. And where, where I jump on the comma, bread egg gets kind of brought together. You know, it's like, I got to do this and I got to do this and this. And uh, Jello started doing that as loop. And I was like, hmm. hmm. <laughs> What's happening here? <laughs> What's going on? And so I think if I was going to, if you were going to turn me around and be like, what was your favorite? I think it's the Mirabelle um, voice drop screech. But what was the one that I thought was the best? It was the loop. Oh yeah, exactly. Modification. I, I completely agree uh, that 
so when I, when I saw that Jello uh, got spo like, spoiled uh, himself on everything, I was like, all right, that's that's too bad, but that's fine. And then I remembered that he was act like he was doing loop, loop, and I was like, oh fuck yeah, <laughs> oh this is good, let's go. <laughs> And Jello points out in the chat, I do also hit consonants harder than him. And he started doing that too. And I was uh -oh. like, oh, you're right. Because I I don't know why I do this, but I have very over enunciated diction. It was actually one of the things I struggled with the most as like a newbie voice actor is like, regardless of how, of what a character was going through, I always kind of talked in a very, like I am pronouncing all of my consonants sort of way. Mm -hmm. um, but that can tend to make a character sound stuck up yeah, um, yeah. So, like, if I was playing Odile, for example, I'd probably do that of, like, okay, this is me doing an Odile voice, and I, I do British because of Savvy, but also would <laughs> stick the landing on every single consonant because it makes a character sound more stuck up. Yeah. Um, whereas I was actually fighting against myself doing Seifrin and trying to not do that so much, but as soon as I get to the high emotion stuff, it comes back out because it's high emotion. Yeah, um, that's interesting. Especially because, like, first, like, first thought would be, especially for uh, emotional moments, to actually start slurring your words a bit as mm -hmm. you're talking faster and and paying less attention to that sort of stuff. But I, I kind of, I, I like the idea of actually enunciating more because, like, this is really important that I say this stuff right. I'm trying mm -hmm. to figure it out, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. It's so interesting. Jello Singh was studying my breakdowns because I punch high emotion stuff where most people do. You're right. They slur it. You know, your your thought process is, well, if I was really upset, you know, and most people, when they get upset, they get more just they're mushing their words together. They're trying to get through what they're what they want to say. Yeah. People the brain goes faster up. than the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas I and this is true of me in real life. If I'm ever mad. I articulate so much. When <laughs> that is how I tell people that I am pissed off. Um, and people have, have been like, oh, my God. Uh, that this, is, is, this is the teacher voice. It's very teacher voice, but it's me. Um, and that is an element that seeps into a lot of my characters without me really thinking about it, unless I specifically turn around and go, I have made a decision that this character is going to slur their words when they're upset. Mm -hmm. And then I have to actively do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whereas for the most part, all of us will just do our natural thing unless we have made a strong choice. So there's, a, there's this hilarious anecdote that I uh, love where a friend of mine was playing Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Mm -hmm. which is a game that I did like NPCs for. Um, and there's a scene where I'm playing some random woman in the stands of a Coliseum when it gets attacked. Um, and they were like, just scream, you know, just scream. And so I do my one scream, my real ass life scream. Mm -hmm. I have one scream that I do when I'm actually scared. It's <laughs> always the same. <laughs> and so many of my friends were like, there, there you are. I found you. <laughs> it's your That's one fun. scream um, whereas I could make a decision of like this character screams differently but unless I make that choice every character I've ever played screams like me Oh, that's so interesting. Oh, it just makes me want to re-listen to all of the streams again to try and, and figure that stuff out. Because again, I know nothing about voice acting, so I'm like, I should pay attention to that stuff. Oh my oh, god. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, Seifrin, Seifrin is so close to my natural voice and was so technically demanding on an emotional level that I ended up making zero choices about how he talks. <laughs> I was like, he talks like me, he screams like me, he cries like me, he does everything exactly like me, and all I am doing is emotion, emotion, emotion. I'm just changing my emotions. Um, and at a certain point, I started doing like, this is my guy voice, like it, I'm a little bit lower. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if you go back and you do listen to it, the way that Seifrin yells is just me. Um, and the way that... There's that one bit, that one breakdown where there's like maniacal laughter for a minute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
And that's just, it's the same laugh I always do if a character is evil or, or going crazy. That is my my <laughs> evil laugh. Yay! <laughs> um, that, that, <laughs> like, that's me. Um, I'm like, I, I could, if I was doing this in a professional space where we were sitting down and like, we're going to do multiple takes, I might be like, let's try and find out, like, figure out a funky way that this character laughs or this character cries. But in a live setting, I was like, Evil laugh me. is so good. <laughs> He's me. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I mean, you know, again, not to, sorry questions, I'm ignoring you, but we're talking and we're vibing. Um, <laughs> I relate to Seafren a little bit too much. Also, so him having all my mannerisms is more emotionally affecting for me personally mm. as well. When I listen back to it, I'm like, oh, oh, that's me. Oh, put a little too much of myself in there. Because I and I said it during the stream where like we got to the end where everyone's like forgiving Seafren, and I was like, I wouldn't forgive me. <laughs> And, and that's exactly what Seferin was saying. And I was like, oops, I, we shouldn't be, you shouldn't be, um, mm. This is honestly so funny and so rewarding to hear the, the number of people that relate to, to, to Seferin. Uh, mm. Thank you and I'm sorry. Uh, but also, <laughs> but also remember, I am the original Seferinkin. You get in line, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Get, myself get in too. line. <laughs> I'm standing behind you going, exactly. I also relate. I also relate. <laughs> oh my God. Just like me for real. <laughs> Just like me for real. Well, that like, there is so, there's so much. And to me, I go, there's so much human about Seyfrin. And it's like, uh, maybe there's so much you about Seyfrin, but there's so much human about Seyfrin to me about like, the fear of being abandoned and wanting to stay in happy times forever and not even conscious of it, of just like subconsciously, this is what I wanted. Um, and subconsciously, yeah. this is how I feel. Cause I, that's, oh, it's me. You know, like, I don't, I don't think I'm not like, I, I don't walk around all day being like, I am afraid of being abandoned by my friends. Cause that's a weird thing to think. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But very often I'll be like, you know, you see a photo of friends out to eat or something, and you're like, oh, I didn't get invited. Yeah, they, they went without me. That must mean I'm not very interesting. And you're right, like, it leads up, you. Shut up! <laughs> it leads you to a place where I'm like, oh, that's exactly what this character is going through. And that's why it was so interesting to write Sifrin, because I try very much to be uh like very self-aware and i'm like oh i acted weird what's up with that <laughs> let's try to think about it and so writing sifrin who is very much like a oh i did something weird i'm gonna immediately forget about it because i don't i don't want to be self-aware that scary was such a a, a fun character to explore that is aware that there's things that are wrong with him but very much in denial about it it's like yeah i have something's wrong with me but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna think about that <laughs> i love it and it's 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 a little bit haunting because nobody wants to think about their own mental problems uh, yeah, you know, you, yeah 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 you yeah be like you don't sit down to play a video game and go i can't wait for a haunting look back in on myself let's go um, yeah, and, and that's why sometimes I see people, like, for, for funny moments and less funny moments, like, the whole Sifrin is not aware that Isabeau is in love with him and has, like, a massive crush on him. Uh, you genuinely have me, I'm not talking from experience, not at all, but people who don't notice that sort of stuff, and it's like, from the outside, you're like, my dude, wake up. But you, you do find yourself in those situations where it's like, oh my god, oh my god, I ju it just needed to mm -hmm. click. Just give mm -hmm. me, I didn't have the key yet, I'm so... <laughs> and, that was me as, and that was me as a kid too, as a, and, and, uh, I shouldn't say as a kid, that's me now. Um, where people will be like, oh yeah, I was really interested in you. And I was like, huh? What do you mean? Yeah, it's like, what do you mean? What? 
Uh, I had I had someone, I was at like a high school reunion and they were like, oh yeah, I, I was really interested in you in high school. And I thought back to every, in well, I tried to think that I've got terrible memory. So I was like, every interaction with this man that I can remember, let me think back to it. And I was like, uh, I don't, I didn't, I didn't get a single hint. Um, and that's just, you know, that's just life. Like, that's just life. And yeah, like some some sometimes sometimes people are stupid, you guys. And and I mean that in so much love in, in my heart. No, maybe stupid isn't the right word, but just like people can be really oblivious to some things. Mm -hmm. And and that's kind of that's also to a certain extent how I wrote Isabeau and Odile as well, where they are like Isabel and Odile for me are such opposite characters where uh, Odile is very much uh, a very smart person, but not smart emotionally, while Isabel is so emotionally smart. Mm. And so if they fused, they would be the perfect person. <laughs> <laughs> and and so it's 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 interesting to kind of go, all right, where, what are things that some characters are going to notice that some others are just like, this is straight up not in my lane of sight at all. <laughs> it's so hilarious. This is so like off topic random, but um, when we've started playing, I remember, um, you know, Savvy and Jello were like, ooh, Odile. And they showed me Izavo and they were like, look at this. Um, Cause I am, I'm a himbo lover. Mm -hmm. Um, and Izavo has has the look about him. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And then I walked out of the game um, with brainworms about Sifrin and Loop. And I was like, okay, these are the characters that resonated with me because they're me. Um, and Izavo, I do love, but I'm like, didn't end up being that type of character at all. Um, and I was like, ooh. That's like not catered to me, but I'm so interested um, <laughs> in Izavo because I was like, I love that this is what the character actually is. And it wasn't just a himbo um, because also a lot of people don't do himbos well. Um, so there's always, there's always, you know, no fear, one fear is how I feel about like poor characters. Himbo character. Yeah, yeah. It's like, is he actually buff and is he actually emotionally intelligent? That's the two things. <laughs> And I mean, Isavo is, but it's, you know, there's, there's more going on. And yeah. I'm like, ooh, as a character, great. And I'm like, uh, but, but as a Lenti trap, no, it's not <laughs> there, um, which is so funny. Okay. Okay. Your questions, your questions. The questions, um, the questions. Well, this, we kind of touched on this, but it was a, uh, what are some direct inspirations for both of you when it comes to writing slash acting these characters? And like yeah, I just said, we, we kind of talked about this. There's yes. nothing like Seifrin is just me. There was no inspiration. I, um, I actually have a question for, for you uh, oh, okay. as, as someone who has played Seifrin. Do you have like any, any head cannons as someone who's played Seifrin that you're like, oh, this wasn't said in the game, but 100% this is one thing that I believe about Seifrin. 100%. Oh. Are there any, like, is that something that happens when you, when you, or, or just in general, is that something that happens as a voice actor when you voice oh, characters? Where you're like, you have never said this thing in, like, the canon, but I know this for sure. <laughs> oh, absolutely. There's, uh, there's several characters, um, one character that I really got into the head of and really got attached to was um, Moe's from Borderlands 3. Um, mm -hmm. And she's another one who like is just my natural voice mostly. And the only difference is that she's a little more military. Um, so it's it's me, but like kind of loud and like kind of an asshole as opposed to Sifrin who just talks like a normal person. Um, and I had head cannons for her. Mm -hmm. um, that I went in and I was like, this is what I think. And like, this is how I feel about like what she would think. And, you know, um, and I, I told the writing staff a little bit, I was like, here's, you're my head cannons. And like, I gave her a backstory. <laughs> I gave her a whole backstory and that is not canon at all. Um, and it informed me. I was like, th I do, I did voice her with my head cannons in mind. Um, and I also like in insistently was like, she's a lesbian until they were like, okay, Jesus. <laughs> Um, not that, not that again, not that that is canon, but they were like, we get it, you know, um, 
Sifrin very much the headcanons are just real things I do um, because he is so me. Um, for example, I'll give you I'll give you one that's less embarrassing. Okay. Uh, it's not that real. But when I wake up in the morning, I bed rot for like 30 minutes before I stand up. Mm-hmm. Sifrin does that to me. I see that. Yes. Just uh, like... I, I drew Sifrin... Uh, like, I drew everyone kind of sleeping in bed and then... For me, Sifrin has that snork me 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 fit. Like it's just mm. like the little hats and the, the the dress shirts, you know, like the long dress, like the Scrooge McDuck. Type mm -hmm. of fit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can definitely see him doing that. <laughs> just you know, you wake up and you stay in bed for like thirty minutes and just think about shit. And I'm like, yeah, I I could see that. Like obviously in the game, he's getting up and going because he's gotta. Um, but he does lay there sometimes, kind of thinking about stuff. And I'm like, yeah. Um, hi, is this spoiler free? Not anymore. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> Welcome to Spoiler Town, baby! This is Spoiler Town. Um, I should I should pin a comment. Um, we are in spoiler territory now, gamers. I'm just going to pin that real quick. Um, <laughs> Welcome! Get out! <laughs> I'm so sorry, but hey, if you want to rewatch the VOD, the first hour is spoiler free. Um, thank you so much for coming by. Uh, hey, let's ask another question. We're still in the, we're still in the maybe could have spoilers section. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this one's also directed at me. Uh, what was it like voicing Sif, knowing nothing about him going in? Anything you'd have done different if you had known Sif's deal earlier? Um, yeah, if I had known his deal earlier, <laughs> I definitely probably would have baked more angst into these lines, um, especially when talking about, like, where he comes from or you know sense of belonging and all that stuff it would have been my instinct to bake more angst in but i actually think it's better the way it is yeah because um, I, I don't think early sifrin realizes that he has angst <laughs> exactly <laughs> like, i'm not i'm not this is not on my radar at all i am just doing perfect and fine like I, as an actor, your instinct is, oh, I know something about the character. I'm going to put it in there. Um, but that can be the wrong choice sometimes. Um, and I was like, as I'm rewatching it, I'm like, I think it's good, actually, that I don't know what the hell is going on because Sifrin doesn't know what the hell is going on. And it's not until <laughs> Sifrin starts to realize that there are problems that I start to realize that there are problems. Mm-hmm. It's only on super individual lines that I'm like, oh, if I had only known. Like, um, there's some where, like, he'll say something and it seems, like, very nondescript. And then it leads into, like, a breakdown where I'm like, oh, I would have started the breakdown a line earlier. If, yeah. I, knew what was coming. <laughs> if, if I knew you were in Depression Town right now. <laughs> exactly. Like, I say it, like, a normal way. And then I, you know... Or there's this great moment. Oh my God. There's this great moment where Sif is about to hear a conversation he's heard before. And in his head, he says the first word of the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> so like Mirabelle's line is going to be, did you guys blank, blank, blank. And in his head, Sif goes, did. Um, and the way I read it was just, you know, it's just dot, dot, dot. So I was like, did, you know, like, I'm going to say something else. Yeah. And then nothing else was said. Whereas if I had known that, that they were going to start reciting this conversation, I would have said it so dead of just like, did. Yeah. And then the <laughs> next person would talk. So like very minor of like this line, maybe I would tweak. But I think that the whole thing was better for the fact that I did not know his deal. And people in the chat did point out, um, if I had known Sifrin was a he, they, I wouldn't have started with the voice I did. That would have been different. Because um, I don't know how I did this, but um, when I came into stream, I was a little bit flustered because I was late. Um, and Jello said to me, it's you. You're this one. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're the lead, first of all. And then gave me voice direction and said, Yuna with sleepy bitch disease. And Yuna is my character from Kuma 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 Bear who just sounds like me, but is like a little bit hot topic cashier. 
um, because she's 15. Mm -hmm. So she has a, it's not too terribly much vocal fry. It's just a little bit of like, yeah, okay. Like, I really don't want to talk to you guys, like whatever. Um, her whole thing is that she's in a fantasy world and she's been giving this, she's been given this invincible armor. Um, so she'd be an idiot to not wear it, but it's like a stupid bear suit. Um, so everyone's like, a bear? Is that a bear walking through town? And she's always like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, so she's got that kind of air about her of like, oh, I really wish I wasn't here. Um, but for some reason, I heard Yuzu with Sleepy Bitch Disease, which is a completely different character of mine. <laughs> and there's no way that's what Jello would have said, because he hasn't seen or care about that particular show that that character comes from. Um, but I heard that and I went, okay. So I'm gonna do the Yuzu voice, which is up here, and she's got glasses, so she kind of she's got a little bit of like a nerdy, nasally affect, um, and that's why Sifrin starts like that. I was like, <laughs> okay, this is the voice then, I guess, but like kind of sleepy, so like a little bit like this, um, and then we got to the point where <laughs> Mira, and, and I noticed rewatching it, like a couple other people had said he and I just didn't pick up on it. But then Mirabelle says he, and I was like, wait, this is a wait mask a character? <laughs> hold, uh, hold the phone. The biggest act one twist is that Seaford is a he, they. And I was like, <laughs> oops. Um, and then it clicked. I was like, he said Yuna, not Yuzu. Why would he say Yuzu? He doesn't know Yuzu. <laughs> <laughs> So funny. Although that character is a yandere, which is kind of funny. <laughs> there you go. It just fits. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Another question. What is one example of something you've been happy to see people exploring in the fandom? Uh, the wiki and the TV tropes page. Yeah. I'm... Honestly, this is how you know you've made it as like a fandom is when you have a TV tropes page. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> like just because I'm a, I, I love reading TV Tropes pages and, and wiki pages, but I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, I've made it, oh my god! People are so brain rotted that they have to put their brain rot to paper! It's so good! <laughs> it's so good! Like anything, uh... Like, and, and same thing with the, the the few people that have written essays about the game, or that just went on like a, a, a like a three page like I'm gonna tell you about what I liked about the game. I'm like what the f like same with the reviews. I've also gotten some emails from like fan letters, fan letters, and I'm like that's a you sent me an email and that's a fan letter, and 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 that's like literally a ten page. Like, word, oh my god, th thanks? Oh my god, write more, thank you. Um, <laughs> like, uh, for me, those are really, really fun. But when it comes to, like, actual um, fandom stuff and fandom ideas, uh, I've I've been really impressed with the, uh, uh, with the knee, like, uh, with the Bonnie sister headcanons mm. that people have been, have been writing. Uh, I, I thought that was just very sweet, and and that's also another mark of like making it as like a <laughs> end up is when people get obsessed with this character that's been talked about for like five lines. It's like let's go. <laughs> that that is that is so like a that is an affecting fandom because yeah. <laughs> you see that only in fandoms where people are like I have so many feelings that the what is here will not do i must create like i've seen a lot of people drawing what they think the character's parents look like yeah. um and it's like that means that they are they are brain rotted yeah, in exactly it's, the it's right way over for them thank you because <laughs> you only care about that kind of detail when it's that much in your brain and you've already thought through everything that's already there yeah um, exactly yeah I think my favorite fandom thing is um, I've seen people draw Mal de Pei as a funeral mourner. God, that's so beautiful. I love that idea so much. That is gorgeous. It's very pretty fan art. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Very oh, pretty. Yes. And yes. like, obviously, you know, it's complete fabrication to a point, but like, looking at it, I'm just like, it's just good art. Like, A plus on good art, you know? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 
Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and I, as a big uh, a fan artist who used to just redraw good moments that I liked in video games as comics, uh, every time people are just taking the dialogue from the game and just making a comic out of it, I'm, I'm just, I'm eating that stuff. I'm eating it. Thank you. Thank you for following in my footsteps. <laughs> you gotta make the next in stars in time now. <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> well, hey, this is a yeah. this is a good segue to one of the questions you wanted to answer, so that people would stop asking you about it. Um, it says, <laughs> "I respect how you wear your inspirations on your sleeve," and then they listed a couple examples. Uh -huh. But what were some subtle or subconscious inspirations? But you specifically wanted to talk about <laughs> what they listed. Um, <laughs> Hey, 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 guys, listen, I'm only telling you guys as a secret. You can't tell anyone. Uh, I'm, I'm going really, I'm going really close to your ear now. I have never in my life seen Groundhog Day. Thank you. Please, please stay with me during this difficult time. <laughs> you were like, I had highlighted a bunch of questions where I like, these are relevant to, you know, voice acting and, and, and game dev. So like, we'll be able to both talk about it and you highlighted this one you were like i want to answer this so that no one will ever say again yeah sorry groundhog day was not really that much of a thing in france uh so i never i never watched it uh but i, I and and but i have watched and played a lot of time loop games just because since i was making a time loop game uh i had a lot of friends and and, and family that were like all right have you read this? Have you played this? Have you seen this? And I'm like, all right, fine. And weirdly enough, no one recommends it. Day, <laughs> so so it's fine. Um, when it when it comes to like subtle and subconscious, I've talked about Ace Attorney before. Uh, I've talked about uh, the Stanley Parable multiple times. Mm. Uh, I've talked about Umineko and Higurashi. Uh, there's an, a specific ending in the prologue. Uh, the, the perfect ending, uh, very much Higurashi inspired, um, mm. and that's why that's why it's so horrible because I was playing Higurashi and I was like, I need to add that shit now. Uh, and um, I genuinely don't know if that was a like when I figured that out, but like I, I played twelve minutes. I, it's it's not it's not a good game, y'all. However. I got very inspired by it anyway. Like the the time loop, some of the time loop stuff that they did was very very interesting. Uh, but I, I can't remember the timeline of the the of real life enough to figure out if I actually got inspired by it or if I was just like, oh yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Um, Noja was also an inspiration, especially when it comes to the how fast the loop go in that game. Uh, mm. And that actually helped me like to streamline the game a lot more, because <laughs> otherwise the game, like the loops were gonna be super long. But I actually it made me kind of remember realize the um, how how interest and how uh, what's the word? I guess rewarding a little bit to have uh, a bunch of loops under your belt so that you have an actual number here. Mm -hmm. um, I see some people in the chat mention minutes. I just watched, uh, I think it was the Super Best Friends play it. Uh, I also liked the how same thing, how fast that game went when it comes to the, the time loops. Um, yeah, I, and then I feel like there's probably a lot more um, stuff, but I'm forgetting. Uh, oh, Tales of Symphonia, but I've talked about it before. Mm. Uh, Tales of Symphonia is probably my biggest inspiration. Uh, yeah, none of, none of hers really come to mind right now, but you know, like it's, it's kind of always weird when people ask me that question because it's like when you create something, you're not inspired by like three things, you know, <laughs> you're, right. you're inspired by a thousand things. Well, and, and also and like you as a person are a collection of your experiences. So at a certain point, there are inspirations that you probably don't even remember that are Absolutely. seeping their way in. Yeah, yeah. And so when 
and, and, and I understand from a marketing perspective, especially when people say, yeah, this is like obviously Undertale and Earthbound inspired. I'm like, um, actually, uh, wake the fuck up. It's Mother 3 inspired. I've never played Earthbound. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, get your facts right. Thanks. Um, but, but yeah, Undertale, yeah, of course. Uh, duh. <laughs> uh, but, but, but yeah, um, inspirations all the way and, and, just saying three is like kind of like all right just just you know just say your whole life story in three words like i can't right <laughs> i can't do that thank you <laughs> if to boil it down so much and like i um I'm, i used to be a writer i used to uh i, I went to college for creative writing and mm -hmm. totally didn't finish with the same major mm -hmm. um but my writing is so influenced by literally everything I've ever seen because I, I see a trope somewhere and I'm like, I love that trope. I'm yeah. going to use that trope. I'm going to put it in my story. Um, so if someone turned around to me and was like, explain to me your inspirations for this. It's like, I don't know. This is the, this makes my brain go burr and I put it in the story so that hopefully it does the same thing to you. Yeah. I don't, exactly. I don't have anything else. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, let's see. We've got um what is one difference in how you imagine the characters versus how they were interpreted by the audience or a difference in how the story was imagined versus interpreted? Like was there any elements that people seem to continuously pick up on that you were like, "Oh, I didn't intend that." But Sifrin being the king. Hmm. And it happened at a prologue too, and I was like, fuck, fuck, <laughs> that wasn't at all what I was intending to do. Uh, and I, my, in my first draft of In Stars in Time, I wanted to kind of red herring that, and then I didn't do it, but that was something that I wanted to do. And then I didn't, because I was like, no. I, I, oh my god, I see someone saying Sif being the king is such a mad pat theory. I'm so sorry, but it's so true to me. <laughs> this is this is the, the game theory moment for me. Like that that was what it was when the people played the prologue and they were like, well, I think obviously Sif is the king. I'm like, oops. oops. Uh, <laughs> I don't agree, but surely. And, and it does it does <laughs> kind of come back around though. Like it's it's not so literal as Sifrin is the king, but like Sifrin gets his king moment. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And that's why I kind of played on that a little bit where where even Sifrin at some points is like, I kind of relate to the king a little more than I should mm. because they are like, they're not the same person, but they are narrative foils in so many ways. And I think that's what um, brought people to this conclusion is because it's like, okay, well, they that the king is who Sifrin could have been. Uh, and so I understand that people went a little, like a few steps further and went, so Sifrin is the king. Um, but yeah, like that was, uh, that, that was something where I was like, oops, oopsies, <laughs> my bad. That was not what I wanted to do. Um, that was like the big thing for me uh apart from that there's like a couple um uh relationships that the characters have with each other that i'm trying to find the best way to phrase it that that that, 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 that but I'm like, all right, I don't really see where you came to that point, or maybe I do see it, but that's not what I wanted, what I really intended. But I, I don't want to yuck on any yums. I, I, I'm, I'm really glad that you guys are having fun, so I don't want to be more mm. biased about that. Like, but, but like, and uh, to a certain extent, at like being a creator that where I myself was a fan, and I myself did. Uh, kind of start seeing uh, characters as my original characters, you know, where you're like, this is my character that I love so much, I'm just going to create a whole backstory around them until they're not the same character anymore. Uh, I, I did, like, that hasn't happened yet. I haven't seen that happen yet. But I do completely see that as a possibility. And I've made my peace with that. Mm -hmm. I know that. And, and I tried my best to write the story where relationships and characters are pretty clear but there is for sure going to be a moment where 
where I'm gonna see someone say something about a character, and I'm gonna yell in my corner. Yeah! But uh, it's but you know that's what fandom is all about. <laughs> Just have fun, you crazy kids. And uh, and and then and then um, make I, I want you to make a project out of your, the OCs that you've created. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, I uh, I remember re again. I've rewatched these streams a million times, and when we got to Big Sif, um, someone had said in the chat, not to call this person out or anything, but it was very interesting to me that they that they had this interpretation. Someone had said, it's interesting how Odile and Sifrin hate each other now. <laughs> I and I was like, huh. Fun. I love that. I, I was surprised that anyone got that vibe, but I could see, I was like, okay, you like out of everybody, uh, Odile is the least forgiving. Um, that is yeah. certainly true. And she is so blunt and she is so problem solving focused. And that's because like at that moment, Sifrin is being super threatening. So Odile's first thought is I'm scared. People I love are in danger. I'm gonna protect myself, and so I'm gonna attack Sifrin, and and then people, and then I understand that this person was like, yeah, they hate each other now, and it's like, no, it's, Odile is just like, I'm scared. <laughs> but like, that's Odile's character, and we were talking about this a little bit pre-stream of like, some people have interpreted Sifrin as a bad person based on some of the things that he does when he's, ha when, when they're having this mental breakdown, and there is a... Again, I keep saying this, but there's a very human nature to person does bad thing equals bad person. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, as you get older, I think, you just kind of come to realize, like, sometimes people do things and they're not really thinking about it. They're not it's doing not, it to it's hurt It's not you. actually personal. <laughs> it's not about you. They literally, like, you know, everyone has a thought process going in their brain and they do things that make sense. Um, there is a step one, step two, step three to what everybody does in their life. Um, and just because it it rubs up against your personal morals and is quote unquote wrong to you doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong. But at the same time, you are well within your right to be like, they hurt me. I am mad forever. I'm like, yep. Fair enough. Yeah, you know, I, um, I actually restricted myself when it comes to the writing because my, my first very first draft was make Sifrin the most toxic friend ever. <laughs> and, I, and I restricted like for, for act five. And I was like, all right, I, uh, the, uh, the Tumblrinas, uh, affectionates are not going to like that. And, and also I feel like it doesn't really fit with the vibe. So it's not mm -hmm. do that. How can he be my little scrunkly? How can he be my little scrunkly if he's screaming at, at his friends? If, if, too much. Like, I think what, what's in the game is perfect because it's like he has these emotional outbursts and then immediately is like, oh my God, why did I do that? Or gets a negative outcome and is like, why did that happen? Um, Where like there's yeah. no malicious intent, but like does something malicious at the bear. Oops, I didn't yeah, mean to do yeah. that. It's like Sifrin is not there. Like Sifrin's brain is offline and it's just like, what? what? But, but my birthday, where's the room at? And it's like, Sifrin, wake up. <laughs> Please, child. They're like the, the scene where bon uh, Bonnie, where Mirabelle slaps them and Sifrin's response is, but, Mirabelle but, slapped but, you, yeah, question mark? Yeah. <laughs> Where it's like, obviously, from an outsider's perspective, you're like, you were being so mean. But like, in the moment, I could see a character being like, I've had this conversation before. I know where it ends up. Let's just get there. And, you know, and ruining... Just skip, and just skip all of it. <laughs> ruining the emotional core that makes it work in the first place. Because sometimes... You know, um, I've had difficult conversations with people where I'm like, here is the end point we need to get to. I yeah. need to tell them <laughs> that they hurt me in this way or they did something that hurt me. And if you start with that point, the person is going to be defensive and they're going to tell you to go fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. You have to approach them and be like, I want to talk to you. Here's the conversation. Here's, Here's the all the steps. The sandwich. 
here's and the then sandwich. you get to the end and you're like, here's the outcome I wanted from this conversation and you can get it by doing that. And so, so it's like, I thought it was a great character moment for, it's not that Sifrin's a bad guy. It's just, I Fire. have been through this. He needs a nap. He needs a nap. And then also like, sometimes, Sometimes when you're depressed, you just want to be mean. <laughs> That's true. When, and and that, that is, like, I talk a lot about how Sifrin is hungry. And and Sifrin is very hungry at that point in the game. Oh, I'm and, sure. And Sifrin is just like, I hate everyone. And I, I, I need to let everyone know. <laughs> Me when I'm fucking hungry, absolutely. Yeah, needs a Kit Kat really bad, is not getting the Kit Kat, has not been... Is it the Snickers? Sorry. For me, it's Snickers, a Kit Kat. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. It's a Kit Kat. This is the localization. So Sifrin wants oh, a Kit okay. Kat. A Kit Kat. Bad. Yeah. And, they and changed so, it to Kit Kat in the French dub. I cannot believe. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna say uh, it, say it in with a French accent. So he's he really needs a, a Kit Kat, and uh, <laughs> he just needs it so bad that he's just he's just gonna let everyone know that he needs the Kit Kats. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and it is so interesting. This is I'm so going back in the conversation, but it is so interesting that you mentioned like Groundhog Day was not a big thing here. Um, that's something else with like. Um, media understanding of like I am shaped by the things I watched when I was a kid you would be shaped by the things you watched when you were a kid your inspirations would come from there your understanding of characters would come from there and it could be totally different yeah mm -hmm. absolutely like this just just depends on what you watched <laughs> or, or like and I mean also like characters can change between those interpretations where like I'm going to mention Digimon, sorry. Um, <laughs> the, in in season four, there were these two characters named Bokomon and Naimon, and they're supposed to be a comedy duo, essentially. Um, one of them is like the, the guide. He guides all the characters through, and he's got a book um, that has like the entire history of the world in it that he just whips out and is like, I got the history of the world right here. And then he's got a buddy, Naimon, who's just an idiot and is along for the ride and doesn't do anything of use. Um, and in the Japanese, Bokomon has this high-pitched, squeaky voice, and Naimon has this low, kind of Patrick Star-esque voice. Um, that, you know, just like stupid idiot kind of voice. Um, and for their Japanese comedy duo kind of um, vibe, that's like so accurate because when they do like the two-man comedy, um, the higher pitched one is usually the straight man and the lower pitched one is the uh, stupid one. Yeah. And when they localized it to English, I don't know what other languages did, but for English, Naimon, who had the low voice, suddenly has this high pitched squeaky voice of like, I'm just a stupid little guy. Blah, 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 blah. And Bokomon has been made low pitched and British to indicate that he is the smart one. So they sound completely yeah. flip flopped. That's interesting. <laughs> and that's the kind of thing that, like, you know, you can come into a story like this and be like, from my perspective, I understand this character to be X. Yeah. And culturally it, speaking. <laughs> culturally speaking, um, you know, like, for example, I think I said at one point, um, the mom of the group to refer to Odile, but like, if you're Chinese, for example, you might say that she has more auntie energy, which yeah. is like. And that's why, like, I added this moment where, when, like, the daydreaming one is like, all right, here's what trope everyone is. Oh, this is the mom of the group. This is the big brother. This is the little sister. And it's like, we're, we're just people. <laughs> this, people is, this, is, this is, this is awkward. This is awkward. We have actual relationships. <laughs> I love it. It's, it's, I mean, again, it's a testament to your good character writing of just, like, I'm going to present something to you and then I'm going to flip it on its head a little bit and be like, did you think about this? And you're like, I didn't think about that. Oh, <laughs> you're so right. Makes you think. <laughs> Someone, uh, one of these questions, uh, it's it's addressed to both of us, but I'll let you pass on your half if you don't want to answer it. it they asked, uh, what did Odile do in Cubway as a job? Yeah, I'm passing it on to you. Yeah, so my half says... Uh, favorite parts of your performances as Sif and Bonnie. Have you played any roles similar to them before? Sifrin, no. 
Bonnie, yes, I play snot nosed little kid so often in my <laughs> yeah. professional career. Because um, the interesting thing about uh, voiceover is um, you get stereotyped quite a bit. Um, and it's for the con sake of convenience, because if you have a character and you have a thousand people audition, listening through a thousand auditions is quite an ask of mm -hmm. any individual director. So what ends up happening is that people will stereotype you a little bit. They'll go, okay, Marissa has a low pitched voice. I have a low pitched voice. I do for a woman. Um, they go, all right. Uh, which means I play femme fatales, moms. Um, and little tiny babies, little mm -hmm. baby boys. Mm -hmm. um, that like snot nosed kid kind of thing is is a low voice woman with with some texture. Mm -hmm. um, and that is the realm that I get to run in almost exclusively. Um, a character like Sifrin does not enter my universe professionally. Um, and even like a character like Mirabelle does not enter professionally for me if i was in this game for real real i would be voicing odile or euphrasy that's interesting that those are like the only two characters i could or or, or bonnie um those are the only characters i could see them putting me as i would not be sifrin i would not be mirabelle um and there really aren't any other side characters i can even think of that that i would fit um so it is interesting how the professional market treats you and bonnie would be in there if, if if a bonnie appeared in a show i could see myself getting called in for bonnie um but sifrin no um i have not played a character like sifrin and again on the on the thumbnail of this video i've put a couple characters that like resonate with me the same way that Sifrin did or, or in elements um like I put Gangle from the Amazing Digital Circus which there's only one episode of that but I have very high hopes for that character based on what I know of the creator's work mm -hmm. um so I'm like I think this character is going to resonate with me quite a bit and then I've got um Financier Cookie from Cookie Run Kingdom Ooh, uh, yes. <laughs> who has I was not expecting but has really emotional high stakes moments and I was like ooh interesting ooh. and then Yuna from Kuma 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 Bear who is the lead in, in her show and is just really my natural voice and is me getting to express what, what it was like not even what it was like because this is not what the show is about but me getting to express like hey um, as a as a girl whose voice dropped really early, this is what I sounded like at 15. You know, um, mm. this is like this is it's me. Like I'm putting a piece of me in. Um, and there are many other characters that I have voiced that you know, if you made me sit here and, and list all of them, I'm sure I would come up with more characters that you know emotionally resonated with me. But um, Sifrin is so out of my universe. Where not only have I never gotten to voice a Hebe, which is the base, like the very base building block, but a main character who goes through this kind of thing, a character that has these sorts of emotional moments, um, a character that has these sorts of relationships to other characters, an ace character. I've, despite the fact that I am ace, I've never been called to play an ace character. Yeah. Um, because that's just one of the that's it's one of those labels that nobody cares about representing properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's so interesting but that's what made Sifrin so important to me whereas you know I would I'm not gonna downplay my performance as Bonnie I quite like my performance as Bonnie oh um, yeah it was fucking great yeah I loved it and I loved getting to switch between them that was really fun um but Sifrin is just a character I don't get to play and a character that I loved to play because the content was so good and it spoke so directly to me. Yeah, that's that question. <laughs> I could get really, well, I, I could get really into it. <laughs> I've got... I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm really glad that this this was the case. Yeah, that, that this was uh, a, fun, a fun role and a role that you don't usually get to play. I'm really glad. I'm, I'm and I'm really glad you came. Although, <laughs> I think I mentioned this to somebody. Uh, it was probably after stream one day. I was like, "You guys realize this is like if we got up on stage at a at a at our com local community theater, 
and <laughs> we were like, oh, we're going to do this, like, play that, like, you know, maybe has not been produced that often. Like, we're going to be some of the first people to play these characters. Like, oh, my, oh, that's so exciting. And then the playwright was in the front row every night. <laughs> that was you <laughs> showing up to stream. Oh, let's go, yeah! <laughs> So like the the first episode, I think it's either the first or the second. We were we were still skipping internal SIF dialogue at that point, and we skipped the first breakdown. And I did not know how many more were coming. <laughs> so after that stream, I regretted that so deeply. I was like, I was like, the developer was there and I didn't perform the breakdown scene. What a stupid idiot I am. I missed my shot. Well, in the meantime, I'm like, there's more. There's, <laughs> next, there's more. Next time will be the one. <laughs> but I didn't know. I didn't know. So to me, it was like I walked out on stage. The playwright was in row one and I, I skipped my monologue. I went straight <laughs> you, to the next You went to get a drink and you skipped the monologue. <laughs> so funny. So funny. Um, I'm gonna, this one's directed at me, so I'm going to skip it for a moment. I'll come back to it. Um, let's find one. I want to do more game design-y question for a minute. Um, oh, here's an interesting question. If you had to choose one theme or topic in this game to be explored in other works and be brought into mainstream discussion, what would it be? I want a MatPat essay. <laughs> I wish, dude. All right. <laughs> That's what I want. I want Here's MatPat. The thing. I want Here's MatPat the thing. to do game theory. <laughs> I love game theory and I I love MatPat. Um, he's a really nice guy, first of all. Um, I, I worked with him on, um, I used to voice direct a, a show called Death Battle, Rooster Teeth's Death Battle. Ooh, um, yeah. Yeah, and that's fun because it's all voice matches, which is very fun to cast. Um, and we had to do, we did an episode, um, Power Rangers versus Voltron. Ooh. And I had to use all YouTubers. It was just like the theme of the episode. And um, Matt ended up playing Keith. Uh, but not legendary defender Keith Voltron. This was mm -hmm. original dub Keith, who has this kind of weird way of talking. He's got this really <laughs> strange cadence. And Matt Pat not only mimicked that cadence, but sent me like 10 plus takes of every line, um, like all the transformation and attack lines, the, you know, I'll form the head, like that stuff. Mm -hmm. gave me a million bajillion takes and I was like oh that means that this is a cool guy like anyone who goes through that effort is like a cool person in my book um, but the thing about game theory is that and you were saying before like it's a very game theory um, conclusion to be like Sifrin is the king but um, like there, there is like reasons to get to get yes. to that point and that's, that's what, what I, I really love about. yeah yeah and like, uh, yeah. I like game theory for that reason. You you can't walk out of it being like, it's true. The theory was right. It's more like, hmm. Oh, that's makes interesting. Me think. Yeah, oh, I've makes never me thought think. about it before. And like, it's unfortunate that it has become such a, like a meme to be like, oh, he was wrong. And it's like, well, it's not about if he was right or wrong. It's, a, it's, it's, just, a it's just, yeah, it's a theory. Like, it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. It's just like, is he using the ways that you would craft a theory? Yeah, he is. That's a theory, baby. Like that's I, and that's what I love about and you know, R.I.P. Not R.I.P. He's not dead. Um, <laughs> R.I.P. Game theory, but R not well, that No, no, there's, there's still. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're still doing game theory. Yeah, doing game theory. Uh, R.I.P. Uh, Matt and Pat's game theory. Yeah. <laughs> um, very sad to see it go. Um, I agree. I would love to see a game theory style um, video on this game because I feel like the game leaves you with a lot of questions. There's so much you could talk about without having to do Sifrin as the king. Like, you don't have to do that. There's so much you can delve into and, and you've sort of intentionally left it open-ended, which thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I hate when... Mm -hmm. I hate when I start a modern show and they go, 
here's the Wikipedia entry, gamers. It's the opening <laughs> narration. And I'm like, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I don't want to hear every little detail about how this society works. I don't want to hear. I want you to tell me a story and then I'll figure out the rest. That's what's yeah. fun yeah. about stories. And then and then same with the ending where the, the creator themselves are like, the ending explain. And it's like, shut up. I don't want to hear it. It's like, don't oh my like god, the, the, what happens at the end of Inception? And it's like, no, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me, I'll tell you. I don't want to know. Uh, <laughs> which is like, I mean, uh, way back in this conversation, I mentioned Little Shop of Horrors. One of the great things about Little Shop of Horrors is it has multiple endings, depending on if you're watching the movie or watching the play um, or watching the original cut of the movie. Um, and so what happens? It's up to you. Oh, that's lovely. Yes. You know, is the ending of the movie canon? Maybe, but maybe not. Uh, mm -hmm. to, to like go on a slight tangent, um, the 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 play Little Shop of Horrors ends with it's about a killer plant. It's about a plant. Um, it ends with the plant taking over the world. That's how the play ends. Um, and it's it's a commentary on human greed. Um, the plant gets to take over the world because humans gave it the means to do so. Mm -hmm. um, that ending didn't test well with film audiences. Boo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there, the ending of the movie is the two main characters live where originally the love interest is supposed to die. Um, the two main characters live and they get married and they, uh, the ending shot is them walking up to their dream house and um, the camera pans down and the plant, like a baby version of the plant is in their garden and it smiles. So there's still a little bit of, there's a little bit of danger in that mm -hmm. ending, but mm -hmm. it's not quite as depressing as the original ending. But also they did something that I think is really smart where the set that they use for their um, dream home is the same set that they use when one of the characters is imagining the dream home earlier in the oh, movie. Oh, that's fun. And it's very fake looking. Like the grass is clearly fake. Um, it, everything is very pretty and like well painted and it looks like a fake movie set and it's super intentional. Um, it looks, it's supposed to look like um, Home and Garden Magazine. One of the characters calls it out. She's like, this is my dream home. It's from Home and Garden Magazine. Um, and so when you see that ending, it's like, okay, they got a happy ending, but. but <laughs> yes. Either it's not real or the plant in the garden is going to, you know, restart the whole process. So like, that's what I, I love that ambiguity because it gives you so much to chew on. Um, and that's, I mean, that's another great thing about this game is like you have adamantly refused to answer some questions. Yeah. Because that's the best part. You need the Otherwise, the game would suck. <laughs> if you answered everything, uh, you would end up with like a Harry Potter situation where yeah. you have yeah. retroactively added too much and ruined some of the mystique of the of the setting. Yeah, like can you imagine if I really said what Odile's sexuality was? Wouldn't that suck? You're never gonna know. <laughs> you imagine. You have to imagine. I'll never say. <laughs> And to, to address, I mean, that kind of segues perfectly into what I would say to the actual original question, which was one theme or topic that you want to see explored more. Something I love about this game is Vogard gets close to being a queer utopia, but it's not. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. It Please? still sucks for a handful of people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. The Arrow Aces do not get off scot-free in In yeah. and Time. Yep. And that's great. I love that because so often you either get this fantasy setting has the exact same biases as the real world. Everyone's racist in the same way. They're ableist in the same way. And they're, you know, sexist in the same way. Mm -hmm. or hom and homophobic in the same way or you get this is a complete utopia yeah, and everyone is bisexual and no one has any like actual preferences <laughs> yes and 
both are bad because both are <laughs> completely boring. Yeah, like um, think about it, please. <laughs> so I, I would like to see more of that in mainstream media, not perfect worlds where where you know queer characters and and characters of different races also it's very I mean, like it's not really touched on in the game well it is a little bit um for odile but like mirabelle is some level of has melanin but it's not a thing like nobody comments on it it's really not a part of anything um and I like that, where you have not completely abolished these concepts. Because Odile still has it. Um, yeah. But they're, they're just different. I, I, I do I do want to note, someone said, I don't like being made the utopian default as a bi guy. You know what? I'm totally right. I misspoke. What I meant was more player sexual. Uh, mm. and, and I just used like a, a shortcut badly. Uh, but what I mean is more player sexual, where it's more like the characters are like, attracted to the player know what gender they are and i don't really have like a uh like the, my preference is whoever the player is and i i personally feel like that is so like that removes so much agency from the characters mm -hmm. uh and uh like it's like Please, please don't do that. And also, like, I, th I think I'm most, I'm just thinking of either, uh, like, I'm thinking, what was that game? Uh, Dragon Age. <laughs> Dragon Age was one example of that. Or they were like, we're going to give you the butchest character ever, but she's straight. And it's like, okay, but if she is straight, that is one thing. But <laughs> can you give me the reason why she's straight when she looks like that? <laughs> What about the gender norms? What about like the sexualities in that fantasy world? <laughs> there's a lot. Of, there's a lot to think about. Yeah, because like in in fantasy is or, or even Skyrim, for example, and and you have a lot of fantasy games where they're like, we are not like we we want to uh, uh, appeal to everyone, which is really great. But so it means that all the characters are going to be player sexual. Uh, and then we're, and it means that we're not gonna dig deep into what the culture, what the, what everyone thinks of the culture, uh, when it comes to like gender, when it comes to sexuality, is just like, like, does it mean that everyone just gets married to whatever gender? Does, or does this mean that it's a little more complicated? What do people see for gender? Like, it's just like, give me, give me more about like gender, like interesting. Uh, cultures when it comes to gender, when it comes to sexuality, when it comes to polyamory, even when it comes to like asexuality. If they're if they're if everyone's queer sexual, how do they see asexuality? How do they see um, being aromantic? Or uh, ro um, is romance as important as it is for us? Or is it not something that they think about at all? Like you know, all of that stuff. Like there's so much that you can really dig into when it comes to creating creating a fantasy world, and they're just like, now nah, everyone's just player sexual, and don't and you can marry anyone you want, so don't think about it. It's like, okay, <laughs> all right, <laughs> thank you, thank you for the like, thank you for the food. <laughs> you know, there's a and there's a difference between like. You know, again, there are some things that you've obfuscated where you're like, I'm not going to answer X, Y, and Z about the world or about the characters, but they are things where you're like, they are not relevant to the story I'm telling. Whereas yeah. if you're telling a story where characters fall in love, their sexualities are relevant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And it's like, well, I need to, know, I need to kind of know at least mm -hmm. a little bit. You know, like it's, it's important distinction that Seifrin mentions. I don't know about that romance, you know, arrow stuff that you're going on about, but <laughs> definitely yeah. ace. And it's like, okay, which informs your relationship to Izabo. It's like, now I can understand, does Sifrin like him back? Well, I'm not sure at this point, but I definitely know that Sifrin has the capability yeah. to romantically love Izabo back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, you know, mark that down, write that down. I, I <laughs> Is a friend possible? Check. <laughs> because I noticed, um, again, re-watching the VODs, so many people started arguing immediately about that, no that notion because they were like, um, 
Sif is ace, actually? Yeah. <gasps> and that, like, yeah, it's like, yeah, Sifrin can fall in love, you know? And I, I'll even go as far as to say, there's a possibility where Sifrin can have sex. You know that, right? Like, just because they're ace doesn't mean that they can't have sex. Ace uh, people can do you that. Can, you can, ab like, of course, like, I have my own thoughts on that. I'm not going to say it straight out because I do want people to kind of do whatever, whatever they want when it comes to mm. that. But, like, it is absolutely possible for Sifrin to be in a romantic relationship. And I absolutely also see uh, Maribel getting into a relationship that is going to be a platonic relationship. Um, but a relationship still. Uh, and just... Just because, and, and that's why also, but I, I, I made, I made sure to not use the words asexual and aromantic and transgender and queer and bisexual in the game. Uh, first, because I thought it would be kind of awkward. Like, I always feel like it's kind of awkward in a fantasy setting that you're like, oh, let us go to ye old tavern. And also haven't mentioned I am bisexual. It's like, what? You can't, you can't say that where you just said tavern and ye old tavern. What do you mean? Or like transgender? It's like, you, you have that word? Or do you have this concept that we do? Um, but I, I did, so that, uh, and also I did want to leave it open when it comes to like, just the concept themselves as opposed to like them putting like the characters in this world putting themselves in actual uh actual boxes you know i didn't i didn't want that i didn't want them yeah. to put themselves in boxes because i do not see this world needing that <laughs> and i super appreciate it because it's one of my pet peeves in storytelling <laughs> when characters yeah. go go hey let us sit down so i am transgender hello <laughs> like, Listen, okay well welcome to queer studies 101 so i am transgender and it means that here's what it means and it's like oh my god oh my god oh my god like just, just let, let and, and and it can be very hard to explain it in a way that queer people feel heard and seen and people who have never heard of a trans person before to understand what you're putting down. And uh, and I feel like I did it okay with uh, when it comes to Mirabelle and Isabeau being um, uh, asexual and aromantic. But I am still getting some people that have finished the game and that have sent me asks like, is Isabeau transgender? Isabeau trans real? Question mark? And I'm like, oh oh you didn't you didn't get that okay sorry <laughs> i thought <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I thought i was clear enough but apparently like i i did not put put the those down clear enough <laughs> i think you did i think, I think you I did. did i think i did <laughs> but you know we're in this uh, we're in this weird place with media where um a lot of this stuff is so nascent that um, people go, if you do not explicitly say to my face that this character is X, Y, or Z, I don't believe you. Um, yeah, I, I need, I need the, the GK Rowling uh, mic drop of, yes, he's gay. He's been gay the whole time. And that's the only way that this counts as canon. And I, I, can't, I can't read between the lines. Thank you. And I can, I can appreciate to an extent because it's, it's similar to... Um, going back to the realm I know, which is anime dubs, um, when people say like, oh, dubs are bad, um, and I'm like, you're wrong, but I understand where they're coming from because people are jumping at a shadow of what once was. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. There once were a lot of really bad dubs, uh, and mm -hmm. still some good ones back in the day, but like overwhelmingly way more bad ones um, than now where everything is middling to good generally and then you have exceptional ones um which is a much higher bar and it's great um but i feel like this game is great in that it is not explicit about that kind of stuff because i i find it to take you completely out of the story um mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. people still come into it um with the same sort of like oh i Every piece of media I've ever consumed, they don't confirm this stuff because it's not there. Yeah. And it's yeah. fair for someone to be like, I am reading this the same way I read everything because that's how the world is. And it's like, sure, I get that. 
but um, but al but also this is an indie game and not a triple A game. Yes, so. exactly. So, so yeah, so, it's gay. <laughs> you yeah, could give yourself queer. a little more. You could give yourself a little more of a line to toe of like it's probably gay. It could be. Yeah, gay. it could be gay. One person made this, so maybe, perhaps? Question mark. Uh, let's see. For me, um, is there anything you enjoy in particular about voice acting for games on the fly like this compared to acting in a studio? Does the sort of improv nature of the former ever change what decisions you make for a voice? We kind of touched on this. Um, when you're in a studio, the great thing is that you can workshop a line over and over and over again until you're happy with it. Um, and I mentioned, as far as like Seafren's performance is concerned, there are some lines where I'm like, I would do that differently. If you let me go back, I would do it differently. Um, but the awesome thing about this format of just voicing over a game site unseen is number one, I was with my friends. So I was in good spirits the entire time, mm. um, which definitely like loosens you up quite a bit and makes you more willing to play. Um, like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna totally go for it. I have no like reservations about totally going for it because I'm with my friends and like my friends are not gonna judge me the playwright sitting in the front row, but like I'm the, my friends are here. Um, and then the second thing is you're hearing everyone else play their characters. Um, so, you know, a lot of my reactions, if I was just looking at all of Seafren's lines in a list, I would lose a there's lot. There's nothing there. Yeah. Just there's no nothing there. Oh, well, there's stuff there again but but I've, there's no like the context is kind of missing you can't bounce kind of missing each other people yeah i would have stuff going on like again you know if i see it in all caps or i see you know all lowercase or your squiggly letters i, I get stuff from that but hearing jello for example prodding as loop changes my reaction as seafren mm. um because what could be a totally blase response would become a annoyed response just from hearing what came before yeah um or you know uh anything to do with like like odile's um like like the bad quest it's like how hard do i jump when i start screaming um you know what's the level that's appropriate to make this character react and it's like it depends on how heavy the conversation was just before um, mm -hmm. And hearing Odile speak and being like, this is the level that Odile is at, tells me immediately I have to be at least 50% hotter than that in order to scare, you know, suddenly we're screaming. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Gotta be at least this level to be screaming in comparison to what um, Odile is doing. Hotter meaning louder, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm using technical terms. Um, yeah, so uh, insofar as you you fry the, the microphone, you know, back in the day, if the microphone got too hot, it got fried. And if you're yelling into it, it gets hot. Um, so you fry the take, you go too hot. Um, whereas, you know, if I was, let's say Savvy had made a different choice. Let's say he was like, okay, I'm going to whisper Odile's previous line. A whispered line, if I have to suddenly start yelling, and I go too high, um, that could be like, oh God, you know, that's like too much. Um, whereas uh, if the character is speaking at a normal volume, you gotta yell in order to have an make an impression. Yeah. Um, mm. But if the character is whispering, if they're like, this is my previous line, then me going like this is enough to be like a lot. Um, yeah, I'm not screaming. actually screaming. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, yeah, it, it's just so nice to have the other actors in the room. I, I just now have reached the part of my career where I'm doing table reads for stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's fun. I've, I've just started doing more original um, prelay animation rather than dubbing. Um, and it's my first time, really. So <sighs> table reads are just different. You know, um, and, and this is essentially what a fully voice stream is. It's a very long table read um, that goes on forever and ever and ever and ever, um, which I really like. But uh, it's it's a different energy than when you're dubbing. It's more like you're solving a puzzle. It's very analytical. Um, you're like, hmm, 
well, the person before me says this, and here's like every way they could possibly say it. I'm and, going to uh, and, assume... And let's, let's think also about the lip lip flaps, I'm guessing, too, right? Yes, that's also a thing of, like, you know, sometimes your your read is railroaded by the lip flaps, where it's like, oh, the second syllable is held out, which means I have to go, so, man, what'd you think about that? Whereas, like, maybe I would go, so, man, you know, like, I would hold out mm. a different part of the sentence if it was my choice. Um, yeah, it it's, um, I would not call it the ideal situation for recording just because um you know live recording you can step on each other you know accidentally go over somebody's line or you can stumble and like not get the perfect take but it's it's great because it informs the character fascinating yay um, this one asks, Sifrin has a somewhat relaxed disposition through most of the game. How do you both choose what lines to lend weight to as a writer and as a voice actor? And again, I mean, it's it's all you. Uh, you formatted the text. Yeah. <laughs> I did my best. <laughs> so this, I think this question um, has been thoroughly answered by me. So for you, um, when when did you decide to format the text like that and why, I guess, is the question. Although you kind of touched on, like, the pauses earlier in the stream. Yeah. I, I did have, like, some, some rules that I gave myself in terms of, like, uh, how characters would kind of react. Like, the first thing that I'm thinking of is, like, the exclamation points, uh, is mm. that I would either do one or I would do three or I would do six because three and six are kind of important numbers, even though I'm hiding that. <laughs> oh, but uh, I, I know I, I'm the only one that knows type of thing. Uh, it's just for me. It's just for me. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like when do like I'm reading that as when did I choose the moments where Reciprin would kind of go insane and those are the moments where Reciprin is alone always. Uh, mm. And like always, when Sifrin is alone, this is those are the moments where Sifrin is just um, monologuing more, so it's showing off their their feelings more. And uh, and as the story goes on, uh, they are kind of slipping up way more in front of their like first in front of Loop uh, because Loop is just like. I'm just, I'm just here. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just here to 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 listen, Stardust. And then Sifrin is like, "All right, fine. I guess you get me breaking down sometimes." Stupid. Uh, and for the other characters, it's like, "Don't don't talk to me about my trauma." <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, like yeah. I'm not sure what else I can add. Like this is just how. I have something I could say um, yeah. from my side that I think mm -hmm. is that I think we haven't really touched on. Um, the rising stakes of the text formatting, um, which is an interesting thing to say, but here's what I mean. Um, I I sort of established over the course of time that when Seifrin was talking in all lowercase or like little wiggly letters, I would kind of do this thing. It would be this, mm. and then. Um, Obviously, Caps was either, like, hyperventilating or yelling. Yes. Um, and then we got to Maldepe and Big Friend. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how do I raise the stakes of these characters being even more intense um, and not just being Sifrin again, like, the same voice? Yeah. Because um, I felt like there would be no impact if it was the exact same voice. So Maldepe became this voice, this like kind of, you know, echoey, yeah. sort of weird monster thing. And I mean, that is number one, just a voice I like to flex. <laughs> I really like mm -hmm, doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but number two, it was like, I want this thing to be scarier than just an angry sounding Zifrin. Yeah. Um, so it can't just be, I'm mad now. And I'm a spooky ghost, I guess. Mm. Um, I was like, let's do something creepy. Uh, because that, it, to me, that's the raising stakes of, it has to be more than just angry Sifrin. 
Um, and it was so funny, the people in the comments being like, I think your voice is giving out. And I'm like, no, that's just a no, voice that's, I can do. That's on purpose. Thank you. <laughs> and then when we got to Big Friend, I was like, I must raise the stakes again from that point. Um, so it became like big. You know, it's it's a, another monster voice that I can do of just like, this is a big guy and mm -hmm. I'll fight you. You know, that kind of thing. And it's it's a little bit weaker because I was so tired. Um, <laughs> but that works because if it was too masculine sounding, I don't think it would be right. Um, so I think it balanced itself out quite well. Um, yes, but, yes. you know, th that's an interesting thing to think about too is the raising stakes of your character has been given like a super form of some description. Is it just going to be the same voice or are you going to do yeah. something more? Mm -hmm. You know, is this, is this like a monster form? And I've played a lot of characters who have two forms or two voices. Um, great example is in another world with my smartphone um, is, is a show. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I voice like a little tiger and um, when she first shows up, she talks like this. she's a big tiger. And it's that voice. Um, and then turns into a little baby tiger. And there was a conversation for like a split second where it was like, should the baby tiger just talk like a normal, like me, just me. Um, but I was like, what happens if a middle form gets introduced? Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, because I was convinced. Just in case. <laughs> I was convinced. It never happened. Um, but I was convinced that the character might show up as like a human. Um, yeah. Mm. I was like, what happens if she shows up as like a normal human woman? Um, then what? You know, if I just do a normal voice for the little baby form, I won't have anywhere to go unless I go really deep with it. Mm -hmm. Um so what I ended up doing is, and it's very similar to the Japanese, so it's not entirely my idea, but, um, you know, he kind of talks like this. He's just a little tiger guy. He's just a little guy. Yeah. <laughs> and that gave me a space in, in between those two voices where I was like, if the character gets turned into a human, my normal voice is still on the table. Yeah, for sure. I was not expecting Sifrin to turn into a giant monster, so um, <laughs> I, I, you did really good. <laughs> I raised the stakes a little too high on the first one, and it didn't give me quite as many places to go. But I really do like how it's her. I wouldn't change it. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't change it. Um, okay, we're almost at the done of the of the could have spoilers questions, and then we'll do the inherent spoilers questions, and then we're done, so gamers. Yeah. Um. So let's see. Last one in this section. Have you seen, oh, this is to me, um, but you could answer too. Have you seen other people's uh, voice acting the game and how do you feel about their versions of it? What differences have you noticed? Um, I mentioned earlier uh, that everyone does loop the exact same way and I think that's so funny. Um, Isabo, I feel like people tend to over -masculine, masculinize because mm -hmm. he's, He's like the only he, him around. Yep. <laughs> and so people go, he's a big guy. And I'm like, ah, maybe, but like, I, I, I wouldn't personally, but I understand if, if, especially if you're doing all the voices yourself, Yeah. you have to distinguish them. Um, so, you know, Isabo becomes a big guy. Um, but the thing that also stood out to me that I found very funny is um, Seafren tends to just be people's normal voices, um, which is a voice acting tip, I guess, that I am always sure. recommending to my students um, that I didn't follow myself when we started because I'm a fool. Um, but my, my tip that I always give to my students is if you are playing the main character in something or if you're auditioning for the main character, it is very smart to just do your normal voice. Um, and people can struggle with that because they'll see, like, for example, in anime, you'll see a little anime girl and you want to do a little anime girl voice because it's a little anime girl. But the problem with that is, all right, that anime girl has eight hours to record every week. Yeah. <laughs> and if you can't do that voice, if you can't scream in that voice, if you can't cry in that voice, you're going to have a bad time as the main character and you're going to make a bad impression. It's just not a good thing. So I always tell my students, I'm like, listen, there will be side characters where you can do your little anime girl voice and that's fine. Um, show them what you can do, absolutely. But for the main character, 
Just do you. Maybe a half step up or down in your pitch. But don't change it too much because you have to live in that character. If you book it, so much more than any other character. And you don't want to strain your voice. You don't want to hurt yourself. Yeah. Um... So to play the character as your normal voice is smart, and I think most people do it, where they go, Sifrin is the default, and then everybody else, I'm doing a silly voice. And that's just, that's good voice actor sense that I think people who don't think they're voice actors have. And uh, surprise, you have it. E. All right, last section. These are the inherent spoiler questions. Let's go. Um... I, I put one in there. Yeah, so I'm going to do that one last. That'll yeah. be your your sweet escape. Your sweet <laughs> release. Ending with like the worst question. Yes. So like, I'll like, start... The worst, the, the worst answer to the question more like. <laughs> this is a good question. <laughs> Perfect. I will start from the bottom. Um, did you start writing the game knowing some things would end up being unanswered or that unanswered questions would be part of the themes or is that something that came into being organically along the way? I knew some stuff would be unanswered 100%, yes. Next question. Next question, let's go. <laughs> um, for both of you, which scenes did the Jello streams not touch on that you would like the group to voice? Um, the, 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 the bathroom scenes, like any of the bathroom scenes, to be honest, but mostly mm. uh, the ones where... So there are like bathroom scenes where it's Sifrin doing their little monologue and being like, oh, so sad, uh, but uh, if you've exhausted those already, then you get a random chance of having a conversation between two random characters that are not Sifrin, uh, mm. and, and those are amongst my favorite scenes that I've written and but, but I feel like that would have been really fun especially because it's since you get everything from the point of view of Sifrin uh you don't get that many occasions to have the characters interact with each other without Sifrin mm -hmm. um and so I feel like that would have been really fun uh to, to hear those voiced yes I was really intrigued by um, some of the side achievement stuff that I saw. Um, particularly, I believe one is called, maybe casually or maybe officially, Sus Quest. <laughs> uh, the Sus Quest, yes. The I feel like it would have been really fun. I and, don't remember um, what the official name is. <laughs> and Bad Touch. Bad touch would have been great. I would have. I understand that there was no time, but some of those quests I kind of made because I really wanted to see people's reactions to those, and that was one where I was like, "Oh, that's too bad," but I understand. <laughs> bad touch is rough. Yeah, uh, it would have been heartbreaking, but you know that's why, as an actor, I'm like, I want to do it. You know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it is so interesting how everyone can have such a customized experience where, like, there's stuff that. We had a very, very fulfilling time with the game without getting everything. Oh, yeah. I, I made that on purpose. I really wanted a lot of... Like, at, in the end, I, I'm, I'm really hoping that people have maybe slightly different different uh, viewpoints of who Sifrin is, depending on what events they got and how they made Sifrin react to certain mm. events. Mm -hmm. uh, like, what was it? Oh, I can't remember the the game in particular, but kind of how some people have like uh, different version. Oh yeah, I, I know exactly what I was thinking about the the um, dragon uh, dragon age inquisition. How you have the same events, like the same big events, but then you have a bunch of different ways that the character, your main character, can react to those different relationships that they can have with some other characters uh, and all of that stuff. And to to. Uh, to a certain extent, I I'm wondering if people have kind of different like different ways of seeing Sifrin just because it's like, well, I think that Sifrin reacted this way to this thing, and oh, I think Sifrin reacted this way, and oh, my Sifrin reacted this way. Uh, so so yeah, and, and I did try to make sure that uh, even if you don't do any of those um, uh, side quests then you would still have a good time, yes. Yeah, and it's it's so good for it. Oh yeah, someone in chat points out the dagger stuff. Yeah, yeah. oh, that would have been fun. And I, and I saw someone mention like the, 
the change god scene. That would have been really fun. But that would have been yeah. one, one more character to voice that is like, all right, now I'm really I didn't quick. Even, <laughs> I didn't even imagine that that could be a scene. So when I saw that afterwards, I was like, huh? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I also, we very narrowly missed getting the, um, I got it scene yeah. multiple times. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I'm like, that would have been fun. But the thing is, like, it wouldn't have just been fun to voice. It also would have been fun to hear Will and Savvy go, react ooh, to. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And with, without that element of surprise, what is it really? <laughs> it's, just, it's just two lines. <laughs> How many scenes are there? Isn't there something like 40 hours of content if you do everything or something redonkulous? A lot of people are spending 80 hours on it, so I don't, 80 I don't know. 80 hours? Yeah, I uh, I don't remember the, like maybe someone, I, I saw some wiki people in here, you would know better than me, but I think the game is 175,000 words? Question mark? Wow. There's, I wrote a lot of text. Uh, my my producer was like, all right, we can only do one language. I'm like, sorry, I'm so sorry. I know we had more plans, but I wrote too much. <laughs> oh, isn't that great? All right, let's see. Favorite Sifrin freakout? Mm. I, I, I really like the Odile act five mm -hmm. freak out just yeah because Sifrin is such a little asshole my little guy my little meow meow uh <laughs> but um no well, i guess for me it's I, I really like writing the freak outs like I, I oh actually i do have one but it's it's such a mild freak out compared to the other ones and that's uh when loop like it's it's a one of the loop chats that you can have where uh loop is like I'm pretty sure you've never thought about what would happen if you got out of the loop. So friend's like, no, oh, there's lots to look forward to, like... Da 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 mm. da 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 <laughs> and, and just, like, just thinks about it and Loop doesn't say anything, and then Sifrin just loops back and Loop is like... Ugh. Hi! Oh my god, it's so nice to see you! Hey, hi! <laughs> How are you doing? Do you heal this, this? We're gonna ignore all of that. How are you doing? This whole new loop. Mm -hmm. like, such a, a, a silent, silent freak out. <laughs> I really liked writing that. <laughs> I think those are both excellent scenes, and I, I probably would have said the Odile one as well. I'll say, um, and again, the one that ended up having maniacal laughter in it. The oh god, Mirabelle's gonna be here soon. Of like that slow descent that immediately gets yanked out from under you. I was like, ooh. Yeah, doing those. And, and there's one at the very beginning where Sifrin's like, ah, back, I look back, I look back, I look back, all right, I'm over it now. <laughs> like, it's, it's fine. I'm all good. <laughs> like, Sifrin in real time putting that in the box. <laughs> Though I think my favorite one to voice might have been just the entire big friend scene because i'll count that as a freak out yeah oh yeah that's a really long meltdown for sure it's a really long meltdown and, and one of my favorite lines in the whole thing is was something it's uh, i'm not gonna get it exactly right but it's like um you're he ends up saying you're here with me um and i was like i lost the monster voice at that point and was just crying <laughs> yeah. and i was like that's good. That's, I like that. Yeah. That ended up real nice. And so that entire scene now, the only, my only regret for that scene is that I make myself too quiet because I didn't want to blow out anyone's ears. Um, <laughs> so I, I get kind of quiet at one point, but that's okay. You know, we were doing it on the fly. It happens. Happens, yeah. Uh, here's a question. Which in-game event did you have the most fun watching players and streamers react to? Uh, people eating the pineapple. <laughs> I, yeah. I, just because it is, it is so funny every time in different ways, because sometimes you have people that are like, oh, the pineapple, let's eat the pineapple and, and let's see what happens. 
and then you you have other people who are like, oh my god, yeah, pineapple! I love pineapple! What? What? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, all, of, all of those were really, really, it's always really fun. And then uh, also people reacting. Well, to the to to the ordeal act five scene is just really good because this mm -hmm. is like the big um you're you're watching like reality TV like <gasps> oh my god oh my god oh my god can you believe can you believe he said that oh my god oh my god and then you have like the the camera like I can't believe he would say that <laughs> <laughs> it's always really good. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I mean, I loved it too. <laughs> God, it's so fun. All right. <laughs> Different cringe moments. <laughs> Gamers, countrymen, we have had an excellent time here today. Yay! I'm going to give you your final question that you picked out for yourself so you can release yourself from <laughs> answering it ever again. Is is the red because it's the longest wavelength or because it was blood colored? I just like red. Goodbye, everyone! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so, uh, Adrian, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for giving me three and a half hours of your time. Um, for anyone who has made it this far, I sincerely hope you have already played in Stars in Time if you got this far into the spoiler stuff, but in case you would clicked right to the end to hear this part question mark um thank <laughs> you thank you thank so you. much thank you so much for watching i really do hope that you will give this game a chance it is without exaggeration my favorite um game of all time now um thank you so much <laughs> Thanks. It's it's top of my charts, and that's great because I used to be so wishy-washy about my favorite game. <laughs> I would name off several different ones and never was able to stick to it. So now I can confidently say in Stars in Time, which is very nice. Um, yeah, thank you. This will be a VOD. It's going to go up on my VOD channel as soon as I can. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to raid someone who's playing in Stars in Time right now. Let's go. Let's go. Um, give them all of our love. Remember, no spoilers. Don't overwhelm them. Let them enjoy the game. And thank you all so much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>